Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the 20th, 20th, right? 20th edition of the Home Theater Hub. What's going on, Ike? How are you, sir? Ah, you don't even want to know, but as you can see, I am on my phone, so it's been an interesting evening, and you get, you get the opportunity to run the 20th edition, so the 20th yeah, episode. You, you so graciously called me 20 minutes before the show and said, hey, uh, by the way, <laughs> these these people around my neighborhood decided to dig up my internet line. So those of you yeah. that watched like the fourth or fifth episode, I'm a little bit better now, but I can't promise anything. Right? <laughs> so uh, got got a little got, got a little crash course again because, you know, Ike usually runs the board behind the scenes and and contributes uh, with everything. But, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best. We got Mr. Kanga in the house. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I've been just excited about stuff since Montreal Audio Fest. I've had a lot of stuff going on, and I'm excited to just uh, have some time off for the holiday and hang out with some friends. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And I don't know, do you want to make the announcement that that you may be, may be joining a little bit more? Oh yes, that's. Uh, I think that the, that news rests at about ninety-five percent accurate at this point. But I have accepted a job offer for a day shift, which means I will have my afternoons and evenings free after that is solidified. Which means I can join in and do a lot more like proper nine to five audio file stuff during North American hours instead of being awake when Australia is awake. <laughs> that that will actually be awesome. So we love to show a little bit more. And then, of course, we got Mr. Paul. How are you, sir? Welcome to the party. Hey, thanks for having me. Better late than never. I <laughs> literally just got home. Uh, oh, really? Well, yeah, if, if enough you time know. to throw a few cold ones in a cooler and then sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you didn't know uh, or didn't hear... I'm running the board again, so uh, Ike Ike had a, a a mishap. Some some people decided that they needed to uh, they needed to dig up his internet line somewhere along the along the way to his house. So oh, terrible! Hey, it's happening to me. Hey, they, 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 they're, they're fixing they're fixing the roads, man. So I can't blame. <laughs> yep, need good roads to drive on. That's for sure. So, anyway, so what's on the agenda for today? We got a guest that I was not here to get introduced to, so apologies for that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. We haven't even gotten to him yet. So, um, we got oh. Mr. Chris from My Home Theater, to My Home Theater in, in the house again. Those of you that did not check out his first episode with us, I believe that was uh, our third show that we did. Uh, Chris gave a full theater tour and i think he's going to give a give a tour again also um with some yeah very very nice updates i actually watched uh your video that you posted today i guess it was what a couple hours ago so, yeah um, yeah man you got that theater looking good man i, I i'm jealous <laughs> well i tell you guys if you want to put fabric on the walls that is the best upgrade period i mean i don't think I don't think I could have done anything to make it sound any better. Uh, amps, speakers, honestly, it's, 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 it's the best it's ever heard. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's really good. So the I got to agree with the man. <laughs> <laughs> so is the fabric actually contributing to the, the, the acoustic properties? Yes, absolutely. Um, when I just had the fabric on the front and the uh, velvet, which I'm going to change out later, just not now, uh, I could, you know, we all do the slap test, the clap test, whatever, and uh, I could walk to the front uh, near the screen and do the clap test, and it was dead silent. So when I walked to the back of the room where the couch is, there was no fabric on the walls. Even though I had all my sound panels, I could do the clap test, and you could hear you know, a little ring, a little ting, or whatever you want to call it. But once I put the fabric on the walls, that all went away. It all went away. Really? That yep. to, 
Did, so you didn't stuff anything behind it? You didn't do any? No, they they do make a type of uh, like insulation to put in behind it. Uh, but I didn't go that route. I mean, you know, I'd already spent that a lot of money on it and uh, I could have spent that much more. Uh, but I didn't really feel the need for it because I'm still using my acoustic panels. Now, if I would have done away with acoustic panels, I felt that would have been necessary you know, to put that behind it because that would be more of a, of a, of a absorption, you know, like an acoustic panel. So I didn't do that. So Eric is saying that there's an echo. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we were, we were kind of hearing that echo a little bit. So the, Don sounds good. Yeah, I was testing. I, I was on mute there that entire time just to make sure it wasn't me myself. <clears throat> it may be on. It may be on my end, guys. And I've been over here messing around with with my son's stuff, and I can't figure it out. So maybe on my end. <laughs> this yeah, is not my setup yet. <laughs> no problem. No problem. We'll we'll try to try to get through it here. But um, we got Eric trying to join. Eric, I apologize, but my computer is inferior which means that uh, I don't have a, a M1 chip or an M2 chip that allows more than th the guests that we have here. So, um, we'll, if, you know, we'll, we'll try to get you on a little bit later uh, in the show if, um, if somebody decides to drop out or whatever. But I apologize. I'm um, actually looking at the new Mac Studio. The only reason I haven't bought the Mac Studio yet is because it don't have the M3 chip. So I, I really want the M3 chip. So I'm, I'm tossing back and forth between the, uh, I'm tossing back and forth between buying the new MacBook Pro uh, with the M3 chip or, you know, the studio. The thing I like about the studio is that it's got the uh, 10 gig port automatically built <laughs> into it. So that way I can uh, utilize my five gig internet as much as I much as I have so um and and go ahead Paul tell me that nothing out there is going to support it anyway but <laughs> hey if I'm hosting these things at least I'm maximizing five gigs of upload right so that that's that's just my thoughts yeah I mean I don't know what this supports to be honest it's just most uh most companies that serve thousands of people they'll restrict because you know you can only allow you know it's like driving down highway you know everyone's limited to the width of the standard vehicle every now and then you can get special permissions to drive down the road with a wide load but let's face it most people are in your average you know with car that way you can have you know five lanes across but I don't know what this does, so I, I cannot answer. Maybe it's, you know, a support, you know, 40,000 people. Right, but. right. Yeah. No, I mean, hey, you know, it, it's streaming to, directly to YouTube, so you never know exactly what it yeah. is. Yeah, and, and honestly, if you really want to get nerdy, <laughs> it's probably using multicast, so it's one stream. That's just literally multicasting the same small bit rate anyway, so right, right. <laughs> you won't even touch it does allow your you to, five gig moi. Right, right. It does allow you to go up to um, 4K on this, to stream in 4K. So um, for each, I believe for each individual camera, but hey, you know what? It is what it is. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking into that to, so that just, just for, just in case something like this happens that when I, the professional, can't run the board, I can fill in. <laughs> I can yeah, fill I've in. I've got the I, M2 got 20. It. Yeah, I've got the 2023 Mac Mini or whatever. Nice. Or 20, yeah, I was like, eh, for the price, you can't beat it. I mean, it it's, does anything I ever wanted to do, you know. That's the so. Mac Mini? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so that's yeah, black, I have that's a Mini M2 also. also. It's pretty good. Yep. Yeah, I think and that's half the price of the studio. I can just use the the Thunderbolt port if I if yeah. I got that right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and since I have a NAS, I didn't need any hard drive space. So, and that they really get you on that hard drive space, man. That's like yeah, 
They're charging K scape prices for their hard drive. Yep. I'm like, wait, yeah. what? Mem memory and hard drive space. That is, yeah, is they expensive. add them together. You can't get it really upgraded. It's built yeah, in. Yeah, neither of which double the price of the device. But boy, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, you want you want more than 16 gigs? Oh, oh yeah. That's an extra $2,000 because it yeah, comes with a terabyte of data. And I'm like, what? Like, oh, man. <laughs> That's, that's not, that's SSDs aren't even that expensive anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Apple for you. Yeah. But you know, Hey, when it works, it works, it works you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, can't, I can't knock it for that. That's true. Just, just uh, good enough to be, to handle my ignorance. <laughs> so it looks like, uh, Ike fell off there. He was, um, let me try to get this fixed. He, he's having issues with the internet and everything else like that. So, man, you should just prevent Ike from coming back and uh, have Eric come on. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Sorry, man, I'm full. Cool. <laughs> he wouldn't mind sitting you in the green room. He, told me he was going to remain muted most of the time anyway, just because of his internet. So, Eric, if you want to join, go ahead and call back in. I'll just I'll just keep Ike in the green room. Call back in, brother. So. Can you uh, introduce audio from the green room? Uh, I and think he can hear Can it, he join audio-wise? He can talk, though. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So, Siphonic, what's going on, man? What you got going on? <laughs> um, I'm still, like I said, I'm still buzzing about the whole Montreal Audio Fest, which is the most recent thing. And... Now that that's completed, all the photos are online, the videos have been sent out, photography was sent to the magazines. I've been in touch with a lot of reps and media stuff is coming up now. I've gotten like 20 emails about Expona because I'm going to Expona as well to cover a lot of that, shoot some photography, meet with some more companies and brands and just rolling through it. You know, that's three audio shows in three months. So a lot of fun. Yeah, you, you've definitely been... Uh been busy with that you know I, yeah. i've seen a lot of pictures you know that you you've put together and and everything else it's you know you're doing some some really really nice work give, give some people some uh some links to where you know they can oh. see some of your work you can put one of my i wouldn't mind screen sharing my favorite shot that uh, that might be possible i have one one shot in particular of the show that i'm going to be the only one with this shot because i was in room and got an exclusive offer for them to like shift and move stuff around and we changed some things so i'm the only one that has this shot go ahead and put it up man let me see if let i can me just let me just find it it is in my albums that are on facebook page the same profile name that you see on screen uh, let me see where which folder it's in I have three folders, something like 400 pictures, which is typical. <laughs> uh, this one, this one, is it this folder? So I lose track of where it is because of how many shots I've actually taken. So, oh, I have to, I have to share it in Chrome, don't I? Uh, this yeah, one. Yeah, this is a Chrome, a Chrome yep. thing. I forgot that I use Brave for my browsing because I feel safer doing it that way. <laughs> you feel braver using Brave. How ironic. Yes. <laughs> so while he's trying to do oh. that, what you got going on over there, Paul? Anything new? Anything well, new I'm excited that uh, the Michael's M-Wave is going to officially have the uh, SVS figures. Yes. that I want to check out. And that's one uh, thing I want to get into a little bit later is let's be honest. I'm pretty frugal after hearing them. I may just <laughs> buy all the outlet store previous models. <laughs> you know, it's like, if I don't hear the price difference. I'm going to be like, yep, I'll just, I'll get the old ones at a great <laughs> discount. <laughs> Cause yeah, the company I, I, is a great I don't company, know for know. The, the look, the looks factor alone. Yeah. That, go for the new ones. Yes, because your speakers yes. aren't hidden. So yep. yeah, yeah, and you're right. You're right. That's a big factor. That is a huge. That's a huge factor in in my space. <laughs> yeah, because like I so. said, your speakers aren't hidden. Were you able to find that um and share it? 
Yeah, I got something here. I'm going to share a window, which is my preview window. I'm going to start with something a little bit different. This is going to be a treat for everyone on stream as well, because the show got really busy. There's a lot of people there to see. And uh, I just want to share this moment that we were able to capture while we're at the show. And then I'll scroll down to the photo I was talking about. It's pretty much a lot of a lot of the YouTube personalities were are able to meet up on a lot of these shows now. And we're I mean, we're familiar because we're in the media space and we're all connected basically because of YouTube and other media outlets so that in any any opportunities that we have to hang out or collaborate or share thoughts or give ideas on which rooms or have, our you know, that kind of thing, then we try to meet up and in this one particular moment, I was able to meet up with a few of the guys in the hallway and got our photos taken for media sake. So I wanted to share that photo and it was a pretty interesting opportunity and uh, moment for everyone. I'm trying to bring it in here. Let's see here. Oh, the asset's not showing. Uh oh. Give the uh, moderator a, a little uh, slack today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I did give him a hard time on the first time because I was like, "Dude, I can't even join." And <laughs> yeah, it's 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 worth the wait. I I I prom I won't spend a lot of time on it. I'll go through a couple of shots and then that's it. I don't need to showcase everything. It's all basically on the all the all my socials anyway. So if people are curious. They can just go and have a look later. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. I'll, I'll figure that out in a second. Try because I I can do it behind the scenes here. But um, yep, yep, no worries. Chris, let's talk about what you got going on in your theater. That's you're you're the guest of honor here. So all um, right, you know, I know that um, you know, you've been doing a lot since since our episode three. That was 17 weeks ago. So <laughs> give us give us a little a uh, little background about what you've been doing over there in in the my home theater by the way if you guys haven't subscribed to chris's channel please check him out on youtube it's my home theater and uh i mean he I, i've mentioned this before he's got some really he's built two theaters in the time that i built one built half a built one so um <laughs> you know well it's, unfortunately, it's, really cool it's, it's very unfortunate <laughs> that i had to build a second one but that that's life happens so you have to do what you got to do uh, uh, but, uh, uh yeah, yeah, since, uh, uh since I've been on here before, I mean, the, the biggest thing was just getting the fabric on the walls and, uh, that was a lot bigger task than I thought it was going to be. Uh, if anybody wants to put them on the walls, I mean, I, I mean, I support it, do it. I mean, it's, it's worth the money, but it ain't easy as I found out, uh, the fabric, uh, the DMD fabric is a lot easier than the velvet. The velvet don't stretch. It don't give. Uh, it's, it's very hard to put on, but the DMD fabric, uh, is, is very stretchable and it's very easy. And, uh, I, I really like it. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the biggest thing. Uh, I did add, uh, I, I finally got those JBL pro audio subs out of there and I was, uh, and they sounded good, but they were just too big and they were white. So it was kind of an eyesore, even though they were behind the, the seating position as near field. Uh, but buying the parks expressed, uh, what do they call them? The knockdown boxes or something like that. Um, and then putting the scar audio subs in it. I mean, that was a, a real big deal. And, uh, I was real pleased with how that turned out. So you were, um, what, what made you want to change those JBL subs? <sighs> probably aesthetics more than anything. Uh, those, those subs, I mean, they really put out and people said, you know, you, people say a lot of things, you know, they said you can't use car audio subs and I know different because I know people that has car audio subs in home theater. But then they say, you don't, you don't, you can't use pro audio because they don't go deep. Well, they do go deep. I mean, they might not go as deep as a, a captivator or something like that, but I mean, they do perform well. And especially in the near field, I mean, you know, if you're going to have them up front, uh, in your front stage area, they, they may not perform as good as some other subs do. Uh, but my, basically I wanted to get, you know, I wanted to move them out just because of aesthetics. Uh, they were too big. They were white. I mean, I could have painted them. Uh, so I wanted to build some subs and I looked around to buy some, but I mean, for what I got in 
what I've built, uh, you can't beat it. You know, around 400 bucks per sub or 18 inch with the feet that I put on it that look like the SBS sound path, but they're not. It's uh, a different name brand. I found them on Amazon. And uh, I, I, I don't have the sound path. I would like to compare them, so I may buy a set just to compare. But to save, look, I, you know, I try to save a dollar here or there. And uh, I saved a little bit of money on those, and I feel like they they are performing good. But, you know, I'm into those subs for around 400 bucks. You know, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to find an 18-inch sub that's going to perform that good. 400 bucks i had a guy come over and i and i mentioned this in my video so, so for those that haven't seen the video and he wanted to he wanted to see the upgrades in my theater he follows me on facebook he's local he lives in town here and uh and i started playing the race scene on rated player one because that's my go-to to start with and uh, he asked me he said do you have butt kickers i was like no he said it feels like it i said i know i mean that's how deep those subs perform. I mean, they dig deep and it's tactile and it feels like you have, I, that I have book kickers in, in my couch and I don't. So I'm, I mean, I'm pleased with it. They're pretty much near field, correct? But just off they to are, the sides. Well, they, yeah, they're off to the side and they're not right up at the couch, but they're behind the couch. So, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm getting just as much well, probably not just as much, but I'm getting tactile just like they were if they were behind the couch. And I am planning later to actually build some to put, you know, behind the couch. I mean, they're not far off. This, my room's not that wide. The couch almost goes from wall to wall. So there's not much room around each side. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So it was very close. And then... uh I finally upgraded, uh, I was using the Rockville amp to run my front wides and I bought the Monolith 2100X and, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a cheaper sub. I wanted the, uh, it's the two X. Yeah. The two X, the 200 Watts, the channel, uh, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars versus $300 for this amp at a hundred Watts, the channel. I mean, and it, and it, Aesthetically, it looks just like the other amp, and it sounds just as good. Uh, front wides are not on a lot of times when you're watching movies, just certain movies. I mean, I can pick out some movies that they're on just about 99% of the time. And if anybody's ever seen uh, The Last Voyage of the, of the Demeter, it's kind of, you know, you know, Bram Stokes, Dracula, or whatever. Uh, the front wides are on just about the whole movie. And, uh, is there a setting on the processor or receiver that can use those as an upmix for front to like side surrounds? Uh, I don't think I don't think there is on the anthem. No. Now, I sometimes on Neural X, uh, I hear them some, but not not as much uh as as like an atmos setting that is encoded for that it has to be encoded there's some there's some movies i've watched and i'm like man they got to be something coming out of these speakers and there's not it's just, it has to be encoded i guess gotcha but it's still if, if, if your processor can do a, a a nine channel floor speaker i mean i highly recommend it because when they come on they make a difference they really do so what did you wind up using for your wides I, it's funny. I'm using some uh, Polk Audio FXIA fours, which is the, you know, they have the, uh, it's the wedge style type surround side surround, and uh, so I actually I mounted it on the wall, you know, about halfway in between the seating position and and the screen. So in listening position, the speaker is firing directly toward the listening position. So I'm getting, I mean, direct sound from it. So the FXI fours has a woofer and a tweeter. And then on the opposite side, it has just a tweeter and a port. So I have the woofer and the tweeter firing right, retor right towards the listening position. And I think I have it in, I don't know what I got it in. It's either in dipole or bipole because it has a switch on the back for either one. 
and it, and it works absolutely perfect. I even bought uh, some in-wall 265RT just like I have in as my rear and back surrounds, but I would have had to cut a hole in the wall. I would have had to angle them a certain way to kind of get them. But when I hung these on the wall, I said, I mean, they're perfect and they are performing very well. And I know that seems weird to use a, a side surround as a front wide, but in, in my listening position, it's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know, with them being angled like that, they actually work really well. You know, they, they, they like you said, they point right to the main, right to the main listening position, right? Yes, sir. So, yep. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You know, um, so I guess, and I'm sorry if you did say this because I was trying to run the board here. What what did you um. Did, did you disconnect the back portion of that speaker or no? I did not. And I've had some people ask me about that, but I mean, sound actually comes out both sides of it. Uh, the, uh, the main part of the sound comes out the, the, the part that has the woofer and the, uh, the mid range and the tweeter. So I, I did not disengage the backside. I, I left it on. So I guess it will be like, I guess it will be like if you had definitive technology speakers, definitive technology is bipolar speaker. So if I had it in bipolar position, then the sound would be coming out both sides, just like it was if you had bipolar front towers, you know, I, I, I guess that's what my, I guess that's my thinking on it. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's exactly what I, I have. Actually, the DevTech bipole sit next to me, and that hit me exactly when you said that. And yeah. I've I've actually had similar comments of of with the the bar in the back and the, the front row, it hits both of them. It's be, I know they don't recommend it once you get out at most, but man, I got lots of compliments from the Dallas Theater Room group when they came in and heard that. So I, I'm appreciating that, brother. Yeah. See, now I was using those in my side surrounds. And my, actually, I had the FXIA 4s in my side and my back surrounds. And then I went to uh, RTIA 1s, which was a direct radiating. And they hung off the walls so much. And my theater's narrow. Then that's when I went with the in walls. Not, I'm not the biggest fan of the in walls. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why. I know they make some... Manufacturers make some tremendous in walls, uh, but I took a chance on these 265 RTs and I am not disappointed as far as my side and back surrounds. So then just out of, you know, giggles, I took that Polk, uh, the FXI4 and hung it on the front. And then the more I got looking, I was like, this has got to work good for a, a front wide. And I'm telling you, it, it works. It's tremendous. It really is. I, I like it. Yeah, I was wondering about that if um, if you were like maybe getting some reflections off the screen or or something like that, since it was kind of shooting, you know, shooting back towards the back towards the screen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, now, I never thought about it reflecting off the screen. I guess it it may could, but I have I haven't noticed anything. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I was just I was curious. I mean, hey, you know, like. Everyone that, uh, like Eric said, you know, um, he's running those. And I, I know a lot of people that use those. I was actually looking at the uh, Martin Logan FX series that has the uh, the bipole like that also, you know, prior to me just going individual. By the way, welcome to the show, Eric. Thanks for joining. Sorry I couldn't. Sorry my cheap computer couldn't allow you to join earlier. <laughs> You're good, brother. I was over here like. You need to get a PC with the RTX 3060 sub, I, I'm, but I'm a, I'm a Mac hater at the same time. So. Oh, you're a Mac hater? Okay. Yeah. Well, he can run. Uh, well, then his opinion that. doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I, that would I'm over work here. I'm, I'm over here with, a, with an MSI. I actually use a laptop, but it's an MSI gaming laptop. It's got some stupid RTX video card in it. But I, I hear you, Don. I, I, I'm, again, I'm a Mac hater. But, man, get a new Mac, bro. 
Yeah, I mean, it's 2019. For for what I do, it really functions well. You know, I don't need up until this point. You know, I really didn't need anything else. I I, I think that this computer is actually capable of running multiple multiple uh, streams. You know, like this. But you know, e I was uh, and this is kind of weird because I was looking. I was on somebody's. Uh, uh, pod, not pod, but Patreon yesterday, and um, it was a private, you know, Patreon chat, and somebody brought up uh, an app for Kaleidoscape that's out, it's it's actually published by Kaleidoscape, and I think it's called like Screen Screen One or something like that, and uh, Where's your drink I couldn't on? even find it on my on my apple store you can't store. say that word without drinking <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't even find it on the apple store and i was like what is going on right and then and then we got the reading into it and it says oh you must have an m1 processor i'm like to do what all you're doing is thumbing through thumbnails so that's all mm -hmm. part of apple's game right to to make you upgrade to be able to get to all the apps and yep. and everything else like that right mine lasted i have a 2016 mac pro and I, I literally just got the 2023 M2 just because, you know, some software wouldn't work anymore after I updated it. I was like, God dang it. <laughs> no, I, I think the internet, the internet's just decided we're going to give Don a hard time tonight. I'd love to get back to our guests though. I'd, I'd love to hear more about the equipment. I'd love to Just before we get back to that, I do want to comment on his slowness of making his... <laughs> theater my buddy miguel has passed everything they are they bricked roofed electrical plumbing ac all passed they're basically going to start uh finishing and then have to do a final inspection uh, inspection and then the co so they are cooking so you better hurry up <laughs> well i can tell you that i'm gonna cheat too so I have a drywall guy coming at my house at seven o'clock tomorrow to give me a price to finish it. So nice. I, I just cannot find the time to, to, to actually get to it. Um, yep. I'm, I'm to the point to where it's like, all right, I just, I just need to get this room functionable. Right. So I can watch yeah. a movie, even if it's slap echoing all over the place. I just want to <laughs> watch a movie. Right? So, but, uh, but Fair yeah, no, um, yeah. Uh, so Brother, drywall is not fun. I, I don't right, even know why not. you try to start that. It's it's you not just... that I don't – look, I, I enjoy doing it. I don't mind doing the work, right? It's just the fact that I got a four-year-old running in a, around the house. Uh, I'm helping with my wife's business. I have a separate business, and I work for another company. So it's like, you know, it, it's, it's constant all the time, right? And then I don't want to – like last weekend – you know, my son starts spring break, uh, and it's like, um, hey, you know, let's do this, let's do that. And I don't want to take time from his spring break, you know what I mean, for me to build my theater. Mm -hmm. And then obviously I don't want to take time from my wife because she was off also. And, you know, it's uh, it's just it's just tough to balance, right? So trying to find the time. Um, also, I'm trying to uh, do some more reviews on YouTube. I got the uh, – the Arvolution AK, AK, the Player One AK in, um, so just just trying to balance, right? Just trying to trying to balance the life. But so, I finally broke down. One of my friends that helped me hang the ceiling, he said, "Hey man, I got some neighbors that moved in, and they do drywall. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send them your way. So, they're supposed to show up at tomorrow at seven o'clock to talk about pricing. So now, granted, I'm almost. I would consider myself being almost one third of the way done. Actually, because I did the ceiling, I'm probably halfway done. So it's going to be tough for me to part with a, a lot of money if they say it's a lot of money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and, yeah, but, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, hanging the drywall is the hard part. I mean, yeah. you, you know, but I was the guy on the stilts because <laughs> I always had the <laughs> pretty good balance so <laughs> i'm telling you dry drywall dry hangers like 30 dollars a day at home depot <laughs> yeah chris you did all your own work too right you hung oh everything. yeah 
Now, my first theater was, uh, it was a monster. It was, uh, it started out 27 foot long, uh, 15 and a half foot wide with 10 and a half foot ceilings. And I hung, I, well, I did everything except the carpet. I did all the electrical the speakers. I mean, I did everything and the drywall was a nightmare. Uh, I had, I had to get, people, I had to get some people to, I had to get some people to help me hang the ceiling, of course. Uh, but once I hung the ceiling, I did, I did the walls by myself. I did all the, uh, sanding, the mudding. Oh my God. It's a two person job minimum. You get two people in there that are willing to work. You can flow through some drywall quickly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if you're trying to do it up by yourself. Oh man. You're glutton for punishment. Like yeah, I hated it. And I, and I did, uh, my current room, I did the drywall in it and, uh, I just, I'm not looking forward to doing it again, but, um, uh, I'm probably going to sell this house in the next six, seven years, uh, to get my retirement home. I'm trying to retire early. And, uh, mm-hmm. once I do, and then once I do that, I'm building my final theater. That's going to carry me on out. Hopefully <laughs> maybe. Good luck, brother. That'd be awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, if you guys haven't watched, like I said, if you haven't watched my home theater um, YouTube channel, go back and look at some of his older, older uh, videos that he did. I mean, he cranked through these theaters. I don't know. Oh I, my I god! Don't I don't. What I, you were doing and what? <laughs> what well, the <laughs> the first theater was built during COVID, so a lot of time off work. I think there was three weeks that I didn't. Work work that we you know they, they shut the plant down i mean to do what they needed to do clean the plant whatever um so i think i built that theater except the carpet in five weeks i'm talking about taking windows out five um, weeks oh my god wow. i'm talking about framing running electrical you have, i got a i have a build video on my early videos it, and it has time stamps that shows everything it's, it's it, i still don't know how i did it and this current theater wouldn't even you, you as could, much work and i still did it in like four or five weeks <laughs> you could start your theater next week and still beat don <laughs> you know I'm, I'm just going to hire chris i'm gonna fly him down <laughs> that's who i'm gonna hire right that guy that's hilarious. crazy man <laughs> so funny so, yeah no i mean look it's it's uh it's definitely you know like i said it's definitely t- hard to, hard for me to find the time I, I, i'm starting to wonder if you're afraid to finish it because you have all this amazing <laughs> gear and I, it's like are you afraid you're going to get judged if it doesn't sound like perfect because you have all this high I'm, I'm, gonna steal, I'm gonna steal shamelessly since you youth man's in this uh in this uh, <laughs> uh chat here i'm gonna steal shamelessly from uh from ryan hashtag hope it doesn't suck right so <laughs> <laughs> hey fair Honestly, enough fair I, enough we I, all we all hope that you know but <laughs> it's like oh man yeah. Hmm. yeah <laughs> Honestly, yeah. though, like the most fun that I had was digging in with the build montage crew and figuring things out and learning and trial and error. Once it was done, I'm like, am I just watching movies now? Like, yeah. I, I, I wanted it to go. Like, I love movies. I'm a movie bot. Don't get me wrong. But I love that build process, man. It was amazing. And that's, that's, I think that's why we keep upgrading and there's the saying in the community of it's never done because never done. Yeah. Because once you're go, once you're finished, you're like, nah, this isn't finished. We're, we're going to find the next thing. We got to keep going. This was a part. Well, once you get it sounding good and you do sound treatment and stuff like that, then you, well, and different people start differently. Some people do all aesthetics first. And then they go, and and honestly, that's what I did on my, in one of my theaters back in Indiana, like one of my first mini, I I hid everything. Like you didn't even know I had a sound system until it turned on. And then you were like, what, what, (laughs) (laughs) but now I'm just, 
Yeah, a little bit opposite. And I'm trying to do the LED lighting thing and, you know, just the barcade and just make it more of a party uh, atmosphere or a, like, hey, everybody's here just to chill out and have a good time. Type yeah, of deal. I, even, I, I, I heard I can help you with the LEDs. I can help you with the LEDs right here. You just let me know. <laughs> yeah, I even oh, I'm sorry. Done. On that. I, uh, I actually went to uh, there. So there's an acoustic. It's called. I forgot what it's what the place is called, but it's in it's in Boca Raton, and they install fabric walls and they install star ceilings and and all oh. kind of stuff like that. So I actually paid them a visit uh, Thursday, Thursday or Friday, yeah, thir- no, uh, Wednesday. So yesterday, today's Thursday, but um, yeah, I paid them a visit yesterday just to just to get some ideas. You know, I'm, I'm gonna send them some. Uh, some dimensions to see, you know, how much it would cost. And uh, speaking of how much it would cost, Chris, if you wouldn't mind, I know you shared on your video, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. You, 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 you actually fabric walled, what, about 90% of your theater? And then you used velour uh, or velvet in, in the front portion? Yes, and uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to change that out, uh, but... Yeah, I, I like the DMD fabric. Just, I mean, it looks good. Um, honestly, I probably wouldn't change the velvet out in the front. But if you look at some of my videos, and somebody mentioned this, and I was kept waiting on somebody to mention it. I, I, when I put the left side up, because I put the right side up first, put the left side up, I said, why is it gray and the other one black? And I kept looking, and then I, really, I put it upside down. <laughs> Yeah, it's directional. Uh, and I and I am not taking it down and putting it back up. I take it down. I'm putting DMD fabric up. So I will be changing it to DMD fabric. Yeah, you mentioned but, it in the video, and I was surprised. I was like, really? I didn't know that this would be like that. You know, like it, yes, you know, the piles run in in one direction. So when you flip it over, it turns gray, and the other direction yeah. is black. Now I didn't. I was not paying attention. I wasn't paying attention to details until I got done, and I'm sitting there scratching my head. And I'm like, why is it gray? Is it, uh, it's the same fabric and uh, yeah, it didn't yeah. take me just a few minutes to figure out what I did wrong. That's it, whenever I was looking to build my masking panels, right. And the difference between $12, $14 and $30 a yard. Yeah, exactly that. Like some of them, it's like, I picked up the 14. I was like, oh man, that looks great until, you know, Jessica showed me this. I was like, oh, check this out. And I was like, Oh Jesus, this literally looks gray now compared to this, but this was 30 and the $30 one was the one that was shaved close enough to where it didn't matter upside yeah, down. I didn't right. know you had LAR, uh, but it was wild comparing them. It was like, Oh my God. I'm like 30 bucks a yard. I need like eight yards. No, I'm going to hold out. I'm going to figure something <laughs> out. I'm too cheap for you that. You didn't know that you had an uh, LAR fabric, did you? Right? <laughs> <And then> right <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, masking is something that I have considered doing, uh, but I'm not sure exactly how to do it. I haven't researched it that much, but that's something that I'd like to do because I have a 16 to 9 screen. Yeah, and, my uh, idea is to use, you know, that pink uh, garage foam. I'm just going to yeah. take a couple of those, mount some magnets in the middle, and then maybe on the outside, and then just cover it with, you know, velvet fabric or right. some sort of light absorbing. Then they just stick together and then magnet Not- on the wall, super light. Right. So, MFK Home Theater, we're going to have to fight over whose house Chris has come to. Today, so. <laughs> yeah, he, he, him and his brother came by, man. It was awesome having him here, man. I enjoyed that a lot. A lot, but uh, uh, I, I I do I do signs or I used to. I still have my sign equipment, uh, and I thought about using some kind of substrates, what we call substrates, sign equipment, uh, sign material, whether it be aluminum composite or uh, some kind of plastic uh, to wrap and put up there. But I, I I just I haven't got past the thinking period of it yet. But uh, that was something I was thinking about doing. I, I just yeah, with that, I, feel you like could do, would, like, I feel it would be awesome to have that, you know. Yeah, you could do your aluminum substrates and then do like probably just do like a really, really micro thin uh plexiglass and paint. Yeah, I thought about that, yeah. 
if I could, yeah. so if you do signs, that, you'll know how to do and make that look really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So lots and lots of people, we've had these conversations on the build montage channel. Again, I'm dropping names. Sorry, Don, but no, it's all good, man. there's, there's, there's been a lot of people that have done the masking and we've gone through different materials and we're talking about people all over the world, you know, build montage. He's from Australia. So oh, yeah, I love Tony. With... Tony. Tony's my buddy, man. I love Tony James. <laughs> yeah, Tony's Tony's a badass. I'm an admin yes, over there. That's why I'm dropping names. But uh, um, so we're dealing with different materials. U.S. Uh, a lot of U.S. A lot of of Europe. And then we go to Australia, obviously. And what a lot of people have found works really well is to get sheets of styrofoam that are because we're not working with acoustic treatment at this point right so going back to the pink pink foam right we don't need to deal with acoustic treatment we need we need something that's going to be strong enough to hold up but at the same time be light enough to stick to your screen right and so right. what tends to work really well for folks is they do about a half an inch of, or maybe a little bit more of styrofoam put some very thin strips of wood behind them, like one on one towards the top, one towards the bottom, the magnets hooked up to those wood strips, and then you wrap it in velvet facing the right way. <laughs> and then you, all you have to do, all you have to do is either hot glue it, staple it to the woods and you're to the wood rather, and you're good to go. And you just stick it right on and it works. That's why I like the styrofoam the think uh the garage foam because it's a couple inches thick so you won't even have to do any wood it's literally you just take hot wire and cut it or a knife i mean it's you don't have to do anything to it the only, the hardest part about that would be using magnets that are powerful enough to hold together in the center without actually pulling out but if you put them behind the fabric and glue it down pretty well you, or maybe put a little piece of paper or cardboard that'll hold them you know inside the foam because that's that foam will it's for a 16 foot wide garage and they hold inside a garage door so that stuff is really strong i mean you have to punch it to break it you have to want to put a hole in it to break it it's not something that's that's why that is and it's super cheap and it's at every Home Depot and Lowe's that exists. So I'm for the easiest and simplest. It's like if I can just take a knife versus cutting down lumber and gluing, and then I'm like, I'll just take a knife and boop, <laughs> knife, spray glue, and cut some fabric. Done. But, you know, it's the sign idea, yep. if you're into that type of work what's easy for you you know it's different <laughs> so lots yeah. of good options for sure lots of good options yeah when i went to that uh acoustic store they they built their star ceiling like in panels uh, thank you for joining vtv appreciate you um but yeah we had a they had like a little transformer built in. It was kind of for each individual panel on the back of it. And then they ran the strands. Um, so each in a, each panel had their own little, own little circuit board and it had, you know, the individual strands. I think, I think that portion's a little bit out of my, out of my budget. I'll probably have to do, ha have to do that star ceiling myself. Cause it, well, it I, was, bu I bought a star ceiling probably over a year ago. And I think I drilled two holes in the ceiling and poked two strands and it was up there up till about two months ago and I pulled it down. I mean, it was absolutely, absolutely too much work because I was going to actually get in, uh, the attic space, which is not very big, drill holes, poke them down. That was too much work. So I decided I wouldn't go. I, I started to do it in panels like you're talking about, Don, and then sticking the whole thing up there, and, which is how I've seen people do. But um, the kit that I bought um, has 2,000 lights, and it has the meteor shower, which would have been really cool. But, uh, man, it's just, it's just too much work for me. Yeah, that tends to be the problem with those, uh, the panels, with those uh, yeah. When you go over the overhead like that, we're talking about two to three thousand strands, like you found. 
Yeah. Some of them even have multiple engines that are running them. And so you end up running into a situation where lots of individual labor to, to create it and install it, make it look nice, configure it, run the engines, or, and Don's going to find out if you haven't gotten pricing yet, it is a lot of money to have somebody do that labor for you. We're talking about... Mm-hmm like in the five figure range, unless, unless they've found a better way to, to do it panel by panel with a single engine. So I'd love to hear about that, Don, when you find out. Yeah. I, like I said, they kind of gave me a ballpark figure. I'm not going to put it out there, but it was, it was definitely two. I got 380 square feet, I think, because my room is nine is Let's see. I got a two foot in, two foot in. So it's it's like sixteen wide by twenty one and a half. So, oh wow! You know, uh, if I want to star ceiling the whole entire thing, mm. you know, it's like three hundred and some feet, you know, square feet. So sixteen by twenty one point five. Yeah, three hundred and forty four square feet, and I can tell you, it it, it was. It was five, double five digits. figures. <laughs> yeah. yeah, five figures. Yeah, exactly. So, I think that's a little bit out of my price range. I've, you know, I've watched a couple people do it um, on YouTube, and look, I know they say it's a MF or right. They say it's not. <laughs> they say it's not a good, not an easy thing to do, right? So that'll that'll be the last thing that I do. Um, I, I have an idea of how I may do it. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe just some quarter inch hat channel and magnets and panels just build it in panels just like um just like like i was saying earlier you know if i can build them in like a uh maybe a two by four panel and just put them in and and hopefully you don't see the gaps in them then i then i might be all right that's something how uh tony did his uh tony james did his in panels with magnets Mm -hmm. i watched a video where he did his like that and I mean, that's great. The one where it fell too. The thing yeah, yeah, did fall. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. The, the fallout on the channel was awesome on that. But yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the challenge isn't the panels and putting the channels up and keeping the channels from from a, a Tony James James type uh, failure. It's more of the the fi- the individual strands. That's yeah. the challenge. And you're talking about again two to three thousand strands. Bring them down. Cut them. If you want them to shine perfectly, individually, <laughs> not even screwed around, individually, yeah. take some sandpaper to each one, rough them up a little bit so that the lights are a little bit more uh, defined Excuse. throughout the room. You're mm. talk- so it goes back to a lot of what we have all found in home theater. And if you're new to home theater, welcome. You're either going to spend lots and lots of hours putting your room together or you're going to spend lots of money. Because there's no other, yeah. it's either lots of hours of labor or it's lots of money. And that's right. the hobby, you know, yeah. but there is yeah, entry no. level. I, wait, wait, let me say there is entry level. <laughs> there is, there is entry level and get in there, love it. And then spend lots of hours or money or a combination. I'm a combination. Right. And I think a lot of us are, I, 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 I spent money to have my drywall put up because Don, you're crazy. And I had people do the finishing work and I had people do the patching and whatnot and the baseboards and the, the crown molding. But I program my home assistant that automates everything. My room, my lighting, I hit play, everything turns off. I hit stop, everything turns back on. So it's a combination of things, right? But but anyways, I'm I'm rambling now. So no, you're good, up. man. <laughs> Appreciate the insight. No, I, I look in my consultation with them. They were talking about, oh well, if you want to do a certain constellation or whatever. I mean, they would literally map it out for you and everything else. You know, um, I watched a video of someone a while ago that actually um, he said that he did his star ceiling. I guess the same pattern as like his wedding night or his the night he met his wife oh, wow. or something like that. Wow, that's that's and, yep, and, yep. Yeah, that, that's pretty intricate there. So <laughs> yeah, there, I don't I don't know if it's the same guy, but there's a gentleman in in the build montage Discord that literally did that. He ordered he he ordered the sky in his part of the world the day that he got married. And he recreated it. It was over three thousand threads of fiber optic. And he recreated nope. it. And it and his here's the best part. His wife came and saw the room and she's like, That's cool. 
<laughs> this dude spent thousand hours. That's cool. That's I know my wife would do that. I'm so. This is my romantic gesture. Yeah, that's cool. Good job. That's awesome. It's so pretty. So what happens to the ceiling? Like the same thing that happens to tattoos after things go south. What do you do with the ceiling? Rearrange it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Oh, oh man! So, that, so that's what happened in my view. <laughs> no, to both ends of that one. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we're wilding tonight. Oh my gosh, oh, that's, that's funny. Hilarious. Can I get a cover-up ceiling, please? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just run around and did like put some sharpie black marker on some of them and be like, okay, it's different enough. <laughs> oh, man. oh, so funny. So Eric, what you got going on over there in your theater? What what, what have you been doing over there? Man, I'll tell you, like, I, I my, my midlife crisis hit, and so I've kind of stopped on the theater room because I went out and bought a Corvette C8, dude. I'm like, I'm that age now. I I hate, I hate hated Corvettes my whole life. And then I was like, all right, well, now I'm 45, and the C8s are pretty. <laughs> that's hilarious you're like, you're like that's an old man supercar yeah yeah well, I'm that's, an old man that's now, straight so up i'm gonna buy i'm, I'm, I'm gonna buy a, 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 a so car. so with that said i i i still think i i would love to hope that ike is still li listening right now so that we can give him all the hard time and say finish my theater room tour brother what do you do with your life i need one hour of your cameras we have we have dozens of hours of of a video of my room but anyways so the the most recent thing that i've done is the leds that you see here so um i've got oh yeah so it's like so i've got a, a controller going on that, that connects up to my hue bridge my hue bridge connects up to my home assistant all of that is controlled by and actually all of my lighting i i don't want to gyro my camera and stuff but i've got overhead lighting i have uh, wall sconces, all of its hue, and it's all hooked up through my home assistant. That's the all of this bringing all this together is the most recent thing that I completed in my room. So again, and and and, and oh, the bigger, cooler part about it is, is uh, all of my systems watch state in in home assistant. Being that, am I playing? Am I pausing? Am I stopping? So it's not necessarily even ro remote specific when I hit a button. It's is it playing? Is it paused? Is it stopped? Home Assistant watches all of that for my various devices. And based off of that state, as opposed to hitting a button, it will change the lighting in the room. So that was the latest thing I did. Really geeky. I have a tattoo on my forearm that says geek. So there we go. Hey, man, I mean, you know, we all get into certain things. You, you know, you, you mentioned how you're going to pay you know, you, you're going to, you paid somebody for the, for all your drywall and all that. I'm just going to pay somebody for the, for the automation. I, I got the control four system. So there you go. <laughs> there, there are certain things that I'm comfortable with doing and certain things that I'm not Seems how I finished three basements and, and everything else. I felt comfortable with the drywall. I do. I want to do it. No, but you know, you're, you're not doing it, Don. You're not going to do it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm probably not now. <laughs> It depends on the <laughs> price they give me. If they come in and say, "Oh, yeah, it's going to be like five grand to finish half of a room," I guess, well, guess who's finishing the room? It's not going to be them. <laughs> so. Right. I finished my room too, so I still feel the pride. I know my limitations. So, Paul, what do you, you know? You, how many people are working on Miguel's the, Miguel's house over there? Because I need to, I need to figure out how many people I need to hire to get caught back up. <laughs> oh yeah, a, a lot. <laughs> well, so he has an advantage. His dad works in the uh, industry, and he's built multiple houses. Um, so the big advantage that he has is, um. He's only had one delay in inspection, and that was actually from the AC person. They couldn't call to get it reinspected. They had fixed it, but they have to actually do the call for themselves because it's their work that's getting inspected. 
um, all other inspections and, and he's had amazing weather. I mean, so everything's just fallen in line. Like literally that one inspection was probably the biggest delay for him, which was like a four or five day. And he was like, ah, oh, this is driving me crazy. I'm like, man, normally it's like a couple of week delay every other instance of something, you know, but he's, I mean, he's had like one or two day delays for different stuff. But yeah. He, he knows many people in the trade, uh, it just very experienced, uh, uh, the moral of that is if you ever build a house or do anything, have a really good, uh, general contractor or, or contractor that's managing all the trades, um, foreman or whatever you call them nowadays. I don't even remember what the heck it's called. I've been out of it for so long, but <laughs> That person that knows all the people to call, when to call them, when to schedule them, when to oh, delay. General contractor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're worth their weight in gold. The pro they're basically the project manager, and that's what makes things flow smoothly. And since it's their house, and he is the general, his dad is the general contractor. It's, it's, I mean. Like I said, I'd be surprised if it takes six months for him to build a house from ground up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's moving pretty quickly, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is. It can be done. That's what people don't realize. I mean, I've in, uh, my dad was a, uh, you know, construction worker and you can get a house done in 30 days if you get all your inspections and stuff. Oh. Perfect. I mean, no joke. I mean, it's not going to be like a three story or anything like that, but like a 1200 square foot slab house, you can, you can slam those things you used to be able to. Now that might not be the case now, but I could see someone getting it done in 60 days. No problem. Even today. But yeah, I mean, you can it, throw, you know, people throw the sticks up. What usually as soon as they get the foundation done, the, the, the I, I call them the sticks, but all the yeah. framework and all that stuff. They can usually yeah. throw that up pretty quickly, you know, week, you know, and then you can have a roof on, you know, week and a half, yep. something like that. It's all the interior stuff that takes time. So Chris, are you able to uh, give us the privilege of, of giving us a tour at your, at your home theater here while you're, <laughs> while you're getting that set up? Can you, uh, I need to uh, log in with my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, uh, yeah. Can you so put me you in wanna, on my phone? Yeah, what I what I suggest here because I'm I'm a novice at this is just go ahead and um, hang up on this one, and then call back in with your phone, and hopefully I can get you back in here, and All right. uh, that way we can give you a tour, give you a t get get a tour of your uh, tour of your your home your home theater here. All right. Well, I will hang up right now, and I'll see y'all guys in a few minutes. All right. Publish this and then. Oh, you just got rid of two people. No, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta bring up. Uh, bring um. No, that's actually air, perfect. So I'm gonna air step air away air from air. a second. <laughs> so I got. Air oh air. man. Because uh, be behind right the scenes, in front of the scenes, front lines, behind the lines, all mixed into one show. I'm trying to do it, you know. I, I don't know this program very well, like I said. So, yeah, I'm getting Ike. Better. We need, we need, we need you, Ike. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good, Don. I love you. I'm getting better, man. I'm getting better. So, but um, let me see if I can do a screen share of uh your picture there. Uh, oh yeah. If you can There's a couple that share. I can scroll through yeah, just let's, to let's while, showcase while a little bit. To call back in. Yep. Let's see if we can get that taken care of. There's two things that I do want to show. We'll we'll do the photos, but I also want to showcase something else that I DIY'd for my theater space because I wasn't sure how to do like uh, treatments or panels. And I'm basically known for doing the curtains all the way around my room, which are just blackout curtains hung with command strips. It's cheaper than doing painting. And I'm in a theater, uh, like uh, an apartment, so it's all temporary. So I can't paint the walls what I, color I want. 
So I essentially just do the curtains everywhere to eliminate the idea of where the openings are or create a room divide. And I've turned it into a rectangle where it's actually an L shape and my dining room's attached to the room. But looking at the walls, you would never know where anything is. So I just covered it up. Have but for the ceiling, what's that? Have you tried to share your screen yet? Oh, sorry. That disappeared. Right, right, right. Okay. Window, this. Okay. Entered back in. My bad. So I ended up doing this instead. And you guys, because we're talking about panels. Dang. And this is essentially just pegboard that I have used cloth and wrapped it around. And I used, I used um, zip ties to hold it down. Oh, cool. Really, really DIY. So you can see the black zip ties there. Or you did. So Not anyways, anymore. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I still use the panels. They're just tucked behind the curtains in my, uh, my bedroom. So I have four of them. They've got on the back and you can um I, I can basically like either hang them on the wall with hooks or i can su suspend them from the ceiling with string and hooks or angle them somewhere with wire um lots of different things so they cost me about 20 bucks each and they're two by two by four so 24 by 48 inch and they're essentially just wrapped with i went to walmart and looked at their discount sort of array of stuff and you sometimes have these like 50 by 60 throw rug not rugs but um blankets for your chairs or their fleece or whatever and they were five dollars a piece so i cut one in half and essentially spent two dollars and fifty cents on fabric and i had zip ties around so the panel the wooden panel pegboard was 12 bucks so under twenty dollars for a two by four panel of fabric and it eliminates all of the you know high frequencies what i could have done with the pegboard on top of that is get a uh, a, a drill bit of some dimension like one inch or inch and a half or whatever and drilled every other sort of spacing so it would open the dimensions of the pegboard differently and then you would get like a frequency differential in those panels so the fabric would mute the high frequency but then depending on the spacing the mid frequency would be affected by essentially the holes that you put in it like the gik acoustics type stuff well that would, that would take some mathematics though but also in the u.s pegboard is is what a lot of people use going back to the uh, uh star ceilings a lot of people use pegboard right for star ceilings. what kind of got me thinking to bring it on and show kind of what i did with that stuff yeah that's uh, cool. yeah the, the photo <laughs> this yeah this moment sort of happened we all happen to be in the in the hallway at the same time thomas was showcasing in uh uh le studio, studio du Sang, which is a french like montreal based um shop uh, they sell uh xtz speakers they had perlis in there there's probably a photo in here somewhere of that room so we all just happened to be in the hallway and i snapped a shot with these guys so you've got jason audiophile junkie on the far side uh jay obviously myself and thomas the this is the the svs room there's not much to see in this space but that's the first time that i've ever seen svs displayed with a distributor or a shop hosting the room rather than svs themselves hosting the room sorry dude i'm just dying at chat right now he's learning we're finally sharing and they're like did take as long as his theater build sorry don we're just giving you a hard time uh, he, he knows I, I only pick on people i like <laughs> i just if i don't like you i just don't even talk about it <laughs> Diet over here. that is too funny I see what I'm doing here. It's not if I if I don't have this thing published, it's not allowing me to sign in people. So um, let me do something here. 
can't share like a draft. Curve. Uh, let me see what. Keep going with your pictures here until I can get Chris. I got Chris in the green room right now too. So. Oh, that's cool. You know yeah, you guys are doing of... good. If if I've got tears in my eyes, y'all doing good. So we're good. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, really nice systems at this show. I mean, some of them really expensive. Some of them were pretty budget. Canto had a really decent room there. Um, the Epic Horrors were there also on AccuPhase gear and Esoteric, so super pricey gear in that that room. Um, here's one of my favorite shots, which doesn't show up well on stream because it's the dimensions are weird. Yeah, it looks good though. Yeah, I'm trying to. That's the because the 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 angle that I'm shooting with with my camera is um like it's full frame, so the the screen share has to be a certain. Okay, there I got it. Um, a couple of different shots that I was able to get in that room. Um, my favorite per shot. Perlison's, per per right? No, 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 no. Whoa. You'd make the same mistake that everybody else makes looking at that checker pattern, right? Is right. that how, is that, is, that's what made you think they were Perlison? Yeah. A lot but then of people I saw make the, that the smaller mistake. one with the shape of that smaller speaker. That's obviously different. Yeah, yeah. the taller one are both, they're both the same brand. Um, so the Perlisons and these and Rockport technologies, neither one of them use the same drivers, even though they all have the checker pattern. Mm. So when we, when people when we see the checker pattern, we think, oh, it's the same, but it isn't. They're all they all make their own their own sort of recipe in in house and stuff like that. So these so are actually the board, board the for the is... Sorry, go ahead. I apologize. Yeah. yeah. So these are Boris and Acoustics, and um, yeah, this is actually one of those exclusive shots. The guys actually put both towers side by side where the room only had the tall ones playing, and I just asked to compare them for a second, so they moved them together. You said Boris and Acoustics? Yeah, Boris and B-O-R-R-E-S-E-N. Okay. Not Borensen. I hear how a lot of people say that, but it's not. It's Boresen. Nope, I found it. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> those speakers are. I mean, those speakers are awesome. I've I listened to them, and uh, at uh, what was it? The Tampa Audio Florida. So the Florida, the Florida Audio Show. What's going on? Yeah, they they had the small you? ones. The, yeah, the, those, the the shorter ones here. Those speakers are just. I mean, absolutely awesome. Yeah, for for their size, because they're a pair of, well, they call them 4.5 inch woofers, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that 4.5 inches is the diaphragm size, not the basket size. If you know, if you want to draw your conclusions from that, uh, that's that's my assessment of them. So, and they put out an incredible amount of volume and bass and detail with a planar magnetic ribbon and they're, I mean, that's a large cabinet for those two drivers. So you get more bass extension because of the air volume. And they're, like Don said, they're super effective. I got Ike coaching me in the background. I got trying to run the <laughs> show. <laughs> Trying to do it all here. All right. Well, I'm going to try to get uh, Chris back in here. So let's see what we yeah. can do here. Try to, uh... I'm going to end on yeah, that one. The Boris, and they don't give a ton of information on their website about those, uh, the speakers, the drivers, the the, the crossover. Like they, man, I, I'm going to have to do some research. They look really cool, though. Um, next level hi-fi in Chicago land area is one of their biggest distributors and retailers. There's a ton of videos on them already. Uh, Jay's audio lab has done shows at hi-fi audio and he's done uh, room reviews. There's a bunch of people that have covered them now. I mean, they're, they're making ways and sure. Like maybe the website isn't quite that detailed, but, uh, at shows you'll see, they have a whole box full of stuff where they show you each part of the driver, the coil, the former, 
or the magnet, the motor structure, the like all that kind of stuff, they'll they'll have all that in a box for you to like look and touch and play around with. So there there are details there. I mean, maybe the website's a little bit thin, but there. Well, they're not messing around. That those those uh the the bigger the bigger left rights that you had there LCR, they're one hundred and seventy four pounds each. Yeah. Yeah, That's the X, X6 models, yep. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. And um, the, the advantage of going to a tower that size is you get more, you'll get more mid-base and texture attack because there's more air volume to move. Um, they'll fill in a larger room. Um, but essentially the dimensions of the tower, the floor footprint, the tweeter height, the angle of the baffle, all those things are consistent across that whole line. So it's really like, depending on where you're sitting, how close in your room size, you get a tower that's appropriate to how much room you want to fill. Yeah, that's, you know, like I said, I listen to them. I mean, they're just, just phenomenal. So... All right, I'm trying to get uh, trying to get Chris the V solo here. Let me see if I can do that. And I think Chris, you might be on mute still. Let's see. Crows are just going wild in chat tonight. Uh, What's I, up, you're dude? You're killing me, brother. All right, come on. Let me just run the run what I know. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Now we got Chris in. Nice. Let's see if we can hear. See if we can hear Chris. As of right now, Chris was. I got his mic all the way up. Can well, you is he Chris? on mute as well? If he's on I his phone, Chris is, is on mute separate... also. Yeah, is there a separate? Um... Yeah, it might be muted on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, can you unmute your phone, sir? It looks like he's got the stream on the theater screen. It looks like picture in picture. Yeah, this, this, this what he's showing here. This is his, uh, obviously his front stage. That that portion is the velvet, like he was talking about. And then yeah. um, you'll see the difference in color, like he was as he's panning around. That yeah. is the actual fabric. And he's got me actually questioning whether I want to do the, do the fabric, or the, or the um, the the velvet, you know. Well, he uh, said he has it. He has it backwards, right? So it's still going to be blacked out once he. Well, flips that's it around. the um, that's actually the panel where the speaker is. It's upside down, but uh, yeah. as he pans around the room, it will get a little bit darker. So I don't know. I assigned him, and I can see him in the. Uh, we can see his picture, but no audio, unfortunately. Hey, Techno Dad, no, this is our guest, Chris. Chris's room. No, unfortunately, I'm nowhere near that. That done. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you want to see, if you want to see studs, Techno Dad, we can show Don's theater room. Do you have bare studs and wiring. Yes. yes. <laughs> One half drywall. All right, I, I got to be careful here. He might boot me from stream if he can figure it out. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so, man, you guys are good. I, I enjoy the banter. So, yeah, um, this is – show us your uh, subwoofers that you built, if you can, Chris, if you can hear me. I want to see the competition of when my theater room tour is coming up from Ike. Or when Don finishes theater room first, that's the competition. Yeah, so those are the those are the eighteen inch subs that he uh, Stark Audio uh, woofers. Oh yeah, Scar Audio. Scar, Sorry. Yeah. So he 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 built those. I think he got the flat packs from what's it? G I K. G S G S G. G S G G S G. Yeah. So he got the flat packs from them, and built those. And then uh, for DIY, man, they look really good. Chris, yeah. you did a really good job, brother. Yeah, yeah. those look phenomenal. So, 
So he had to do the finish and everything on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the I finish is always the hard part, and I'm I'm yeah. so impatient with it. <laughs> well, it yeah. looks good, Chris. You did a good job, brother. Oh, it's got texture too. That looks good, man. Yeah, I'm sorry that that he don't have audio. I don't know what's going on with it. Like I told you, it's my inferior computer. Now we're still giving the love remotely. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. But uh so here's my uh rack. At the top you can see I have my data switch. <laughs> got, got a PS5. Have, uh, <laughs> you know, the uh, <laughs> Oh, I can't even tell what that is. Is that the Panasonic U B Yeah, UB nine thousand with the anthem uh av10 here and of course you know i'm avm90 oh, i was gonna disapprove oh, but i can't Ooh. knock the 90. Oh, <laughs> rocking the no, amplifier 2100 20, 2100 and i pair that with the panamax um power uh conditioner here and uh yeah i think you just got that monolith amp in recent outlaw years. too Ooh, outlaw Air, amps too oh man Air, airflow we got the ac infinity for a uh, seven channel in the uh outlaw There's 7000 yeah eight channel and a seven channel by the looks of it and then that one's so for the sub. some pro audio yeah pv amp for my uh diy yeah. subs yeah. which are so let me break it 500 watts a, nice. for the, po the folks that don't know the monolith amps and the uh, uh, monolith HTP one is is made by the same company that makes the outlaw amps, the ATI in California. They yeah, are, they're all made by the same company. Yep. So all of this is going to sound exactly the same. He, Chris, you did a, a fabulous job with your selections, man. Twenty. So I've got a outlaw amp, a twenty one hundred, and the seven channel. Mon That's a lot of channels. Yeah, I think. Uh, I wonder six, if any of them are by wires at most. And then, yeah, and then uh, he's got another uh, pro audio amp down at the bottom. I believe that's what that was. The button, the button, but I forget how you say that. <laughs> okay. I love this system. Where is Chris located, uh, Don? I think Chris is in North Carolina. Uh, okay, I should have guessed that in the voice. I love your accent, Chris. You can definitely watch his channel. He's done a number of tours, and, and I'm sure uh, all the oh, details are there. So anybody that like. We missed the dialogue there during the tour, but he's got a YouTube channel, so we'll just redirect everybody there and watch and follow along with the details. Yeah, I'm gonna go check yeah, it out. What, what, what is, then, did, did we do? We have the uh, YouTube channel linked in the description. Yeah, let me let me get that. I'll add it. My so, uh, we have acoustic too. treatment. We have uh, let's see, we have some good thick carpet. Actually, that's very thick. Thicker than most put in their theater, um, and it looks. I wonder what what chairs are we running in this uh, theater? Because those look uh, pretty comfy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what, nice. What chairs he had? Um, it might be Seacraft, I believe. Yeah, they look like they look like Seacraft to me, or Seacraft yeah. or Octane. It could be Octane. Oh yeah, yeah. See, that's what I wanted for yeah. Yes, that's nice. So you can have the drinks, you can have a little bit of snack. You know, oh, that's the media center. Phone. So I had, I had a seat craft uh, media sofa, and man, that center section. The downside is you never have three seats because the center seat's always going to have that drop down. You're always going to have that open. But I tell you, seat craft for the price, I I love that. I I got I got rid of it only because I wanted to have. A larger front row, so I have four single row, four single seats now, instead of two rows with the, the seat craft in the front. But I'm telling you, for the price, those seat crafts, and it, even if that's Octane, I think they might even be made by the same company. Both of them very, very good for the price. Very good. Uh, thank you for adding that. Um, those are Polk uh, Audio to the, to the chat, because I can really see that my computer is struggling now. I tried to go to YouTube, and I'm just getting the wheel of death. So. RTI nine. I guess I'll be oh, yeah, making a trip nice. to the Apple Store tomorrow. Yeah, those are some of my favorite sort of design: tall, thin, multiple drivers, 
MTM. Oh, wait. Bottom. So I totally missed that. I was looking at the chat. So that was a acoustic transparent screen, and we yep. pulled up the screen. That's amazing. I love that. Uh, that probably was easy for the guy that knows how to build signs. <laughs> Do do we know? Does anybody know what screen projector Chris has? Uh, he's running the Epson fifty forty. Okay. I oh, believe. nice. So that's a I, good I one. believe it's the fifty forty. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's either that or I know it's definitely an Epson or the or the sixty fifty, but I think it's the fifty forty. And it's black. It's doing 60, a um, or it could be a forty sixty two. Nice motorized retraction. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the, the screen that you, um, it's not Stewart, it's not Elite, it's not, uh, is it, uh, it's not Seymour. Oh, goodness. I'm drawing them. Is there one called, uh, Crystal something? No. Stewart, Seymour, no uh, Sizemore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so there's, a, there's another one out of Texas. Texas. What what is the price? Do you remember the price range by chance, Don? No, I do not. I, I'm I'm trying to think of it now. I just can't can't remember it off the top of my head. He'll come back on here and he'll tell us. So yeah, uh, and then uh, let's get him back. I I want to have that conversation. Yeah. We, we well, well uh, have we? And, and what about the at Atmos speakers and the he showed them, ceiling? Kind of hard to see. With uh, you know, we might. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He might have muted himself so that he could um text me what the screen was here. I cannot think of it. A lot of people use them. They're good. They're good quality screen. Um, is it screen and is value. screen innovations? No, no screen innovations either. Let's see. I'm going to Google it. Uh, let's see. Uh, silver ticket. That's it. He just texted me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't. Um, so, Chris, if you could call back in, man, so we can discuss some more. On oh, your man, his internet's up and working. Questions. Oh, my God. Come save us, Ike. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm not hey, too bad here. Y'all want me to drop out? I'm happy to drop out. No, you're good, man. Hang on. Ike was going to No, if Ike anyway. joins, oh, his computer can handle back. more than uh, two channels. <laughs> you have to switch hosts, though. It doesn't work yeah, that way. I don't think you can switch in the middle of the stream. You have to start all over. Can't switch in the middle. Oh, that's a... Like I said, I don't want to take Ike's slot, so I'm happy to drop out. Well, and I want to I want to hear from Chris. I honestly want to hear from Chris. So I, if we're gonna have Ike join, that'd be awesome. Ike shouldn't have been outside gardening. Is all I'm saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might not have been gardening. He might have been burying evidence. <laughs> you don't know what that man does. <laughs> Youth yeah, man flexing over here, we're talking about he's manually lifting his his screen. We've all seen your screen, youth man. It's amazing, brother. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's working out, raising his up now, and down. He, he's he's what is he eight nine feet away from his 150 inch uh, hey, scope screen. I tell you what, really? I sat in that chair. Did you? It was not bad. It was. I mean, it was. It was. It was perfect. You know, to be honest with you, I I, I didn't have any. I I wasn't going like this. You know, to see stuff, it, it it really isn't. It really wasn't that bad, you know. Yeah. Not, or, or I should say, it was actually good. Not not that it wasn't bad. I I actually enjoyed it. No. So, Mike, I, I will tell you, I was wary about. So I I don't have a scope screen the way that you have. I have a sixteen nine, but I I'm about nine ten feet away from my hundred and thirty three inch. And my integrator was like, I'm not going to order that for you. That You're way too close to 133 inch. And I'm like, mm. I sent him your chat, your channel, Mike. And he's like, I've seen his channel. I'm like, he's eight feet from a 150 inch scope screen. Get me my 133 inch screen. And that was, he was like, all right, we'll go ahead and do it. So, so even so, audio advice, thanks, they, they talked about this on um, one of their last, theater builds that they showed they talked about how you know everybody it, it's more custom now for people to go wall to wall almost on these on these and that those specs 
of the old THX specs is uh <laughs> so what just happened people Okay, I'm going to wait for everybody to hop back on. I'm back to run the show. Back to run the show. Just going to wait for everyone to jump back on. Did Don's internet just crash? We are having one heck of a show. Did your internet Dude. just crash? We're live, so please yeah, it, don't go crazy. completely Chris. froze. When, when I hit accept for Chris, it completely froze. Oh, boy. That is so much fun. Let me pull everyone back on the screen. That was so funny. This computer. <laughs> so we got everyone back on the screen. Uh, who are we missing? We're missing Chris. Yeah, I'm missing Eric. Oh, we're missing I saw, Eric. Uh, I saw uh, Chris up there. You got to add him back into that window. Okay. Yeah, we're missing Eric. Where is yeah. Eric? I'm looking for Eric. Okay, found him. Oh boy, this is fun. <laughs> Dude, this is amateur. Oh, yeah, we survived though. We're all still what? here. Nothing what? stopped. What was that? Don, Don, you're fired as fuck, dude. <laughs> Dude. Are we live streaming now? We are live streaming. So. Yeah. Oh. oh. Sorry. It saved, it saved the you whole thing. I knew it. I've been watching you guys. Watching watching you guys. This program, it kicked me off. That's what happened. Welcome to the Home Theater Hub. Let's just act like the other <laughs> half of it did not happen. But yes, yeah, so I'm sorry, guys. My internet did go out. And Ike is back running it. And I would make sure I go, you know, get hey, the if generator I was 20 out. Episodes, then I'd so, be able to run it. Too. So are you, are you glad you got that 5G? <laughs> no, that was totally my computer because when no, Chris it, in, it, it's the computer, I think. The com hey, honestly, the there's no echo now. I don't hear any echo. Oh my god. Yes. When Chris called no, in. It, it was it was Don's issue the hey, whole time. That's, that's what happens when you run that 286, man. You gotta <laughs> the one thing that I noticed was it, I always see myself in the bottom left on this. And I that was real time, but in the stream, I was always jittering. Yeah, you were a little bit lagging. I was so, like, what? Why, so, why is well, that? Gonna, I was like, do I need to decrease my, we're gonna make my it up. quality we're gonna make here? It we're going to make it up to our viewers, right? Chris, do you mind? I I got you now. Do you want to do a screen? Do you want to walk us through? Let's just make oh, it up to make it up to our viewers. <laughs> you want to do a round two? <laughs> they can take a look and see what they came for. All right, know, I'll talk so. to you guys later. See ya. Oh, man, that'd be like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, Don's PC, friends, friends, oh, like man. Don's PC is like a theater room. It's got RAM and a monitor, but no memory. No, it's not put together yet. It's kind of halfway there. The good thing is, it's only ten o'clock, right? We normally run until about midnight, so that's good. But yeah, if Chris, if Chris wants to hop back on, I got you, bro. I yeah, can tell I mean, you this, this MacBook uh, 2019 is finding a new home tomorrow. When, when is your next trash day? <laughs> when, when is your next trash day? Just, <laughs> just recycle, recycle. Let's be uh, politically correct here. Oh, it, <laughs> oh yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whichever. It could be trash. It could be recycle. I'll yeah, yeah. The, uh, it's yeah, trash put, it, That's put it in the red trash can. It's usually the red one. Yeah, the problem is, though, once, once he gets a new laptop and we have the same problem, then we realize it's user error. What are we going to do then? I think Michael's right. It's that it's that fancy, you know, LED, LED wall you got back there that's like you're entering a burlesque room or something, you know? It's like you're walking through beads. Like, ah. <laughs> Hey, man. Nope. Oh, man, yeah, but yeah, apologies, guys. That's that's part of what the show is about, right? It's it's supposed to be fun, and 
you know, it things is. like it this is happen. Fun. It is fun we're watching Don work the board. That's for sure. I mean, uh, we're just if, if we had a just program. Hold, hold on, time out. If we had a program that actually allowed two hosts, I would know a little bit better. So, <laughs> okay, we'll see. Yeah, he's going down Not that hard. rabbit hole again. All right, uh, I'll, I'll schedule some tutorials for for Paul and for Don. <laughs> This, this week, and we're going to give me the link. I those. could probably uh, figure it out. Yeah, so I'm just give me a dime. No, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. So Ike logged into his eCam, and then it shut me off completely. Oh no! But once no, he logged no, in, because no, I did that to him before. Oh so, no! So I we're we're do blame that. shifting. I like that. That's a corporate. <laughs> that's a corporate <laughs> move. <laughs> Look, our viewer count just dropped by fifty percent. <laughs> hey man, if you can have fun with us, whatever. So yeah. we we look, we appreciate everybody in the in the chat. Like like we said, uh, thank you for thank you for your patience with this. But Chris, if we could, I, I hate to do this to you again, but oh, if we could do another tour with with uh, some actual audio this time with a computer that will actually process it, yeah, uh, process your audio, <laughs> we would definitely appreciate it. All right, I'll try to sign back in. Do I need to sign out here, or I don't no, think just, you have. You can just spot. join on your phone. You, All right, you can, yeah, yeah, just connect on your phone, and I'll add you, and we're good to go. Because Ike's computer can actually handle up to ten streams. <laughs> All right, well, it's connecting now, so when okay. it connects, I'll I'll go. Y'all, y'all, they were wild for real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got your. I got your phone, so yeah. now you can okay. go and I'll, I'll put you in full screen. All right. All right. I'm yeah. going there. You might have to mute one of the streams. Yeah, just mute Look, the other. Yeah, I'll, I'll, mute I, I'll mute him. I'll mute Nick him. Because he's controlling yeah, it, but he's really not. Room, anyways. <laughs> but I, I've muted him, so that's fine. And then I, I'll, I'll put him on full screen just so we can get a proper good view. Yeah. And take all of your ugly faces out. I love the he carpet. Proper. Proper. Oh, oh man. Y'all hear me now? We yeah, can hear yes, you. We do loud yes, and clear. Sir. Good deal. Good deal. All right. So let me let me straighten up my sound panels here where I lifted my screen. So as you can see here, that that panel looks dark, and that panel's light. So that's yeah. where the piles. Are. And it, it's unfortunate that it's like that, but. I mean, I'm, I'm eventually going to change to, you know, the DMD fabric anyway, so it don't really matter. Now, this this carpet is not a carpet. This is a rug. Oh. Uh, that's, that's a, a carpet. That's a nice that's, thick rug, that's though. A super thick carpet, man, like shag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Love it, it is. Uh, that 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 is one of my future upgrades. Uh, I I did everything in this room myself. I even did the carpet, and. Uh, I found this carpet at, at a, a closeout store called Ollie's, and uh, it was less than 200 bucks. So, I mean, I can't complain, but it's just light. So I bought these rugs just to kind of stick over top of it, and it works good. I mean, I don't have anything playing now on here. Uh, Chris, I, I Chris guess I'll I tell you, I had carpet laying in the front side back i had runners down my aisle i did that for years and it was amazing so right no shame brother it look it looks good it, and that's some good quality rug right there brother it's good yeah quality. hey amazon for like uh 60 dollars for uh i think it's a 10 by 8 i think wow oh, not bad yeah it wasn't bad at all yeah uh, so uh, I know we was discussing earlier. This is a silver ticket products screen, uh, acoustic transparent. This is what they call a seven series. Uh, what I used to have was a different series, which had a uh, four inch bezel, which was wide, and it was only 128 inch. So I found out that they make this screen in a seven series at 135 inches the same width. So, I mean, it was a no brainer for me to gain seven inches of viewing area on the same width. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm constrained as you guys seen when I lifted the screen earlier. I mean, it's, it's, it's touching the walls just about, I mean, I got a little bit of a gap in here, 
Yeah. But uh, Chris, what's wow. the, I tried to match the What's the width of your room, bro? Uh, it's about a 10 foot, three inches or so. Uh, 18 uh, foot four with a nine and a half foot ceiling. So I do have tall ceilings, okay. and that's what's kind of throwing me off when I was buying this fabric. That's why I had to order so yeah. much fabric because it takes, you know, you figure one yard, this is three yards plus a little bit, <laughs> and it just kept messing me up. Uh, but if you can see, when I turn the lights off, I mean, there is no, there's a look. I mean, the, the, the camera's picking up more of this over here, as you can see my finger, and it's more of a glare off of the camera lens than anything, but there's nothing there. I mean, hey, it's, hey, Chris, Michael said, can you move your camera a little slowly? He's getting dizzy, you know. <laughs> I know. I'll try. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, I was able to get my doors done, and I really like you know, that I did the fabric on the doors. I uh, got that done. So here, now, he, now this was the discussion earlier about the uh, the FXI fours is the front wides. Uh -huh. And as you can see, if I take the, uh, let me pull this uh, off. I mean, I'm oh, yeah. sitting out in listening position and I know I saw, I saw Michael's uh, comment about this console couch, yes, the middle don't recline, but when I'm doing movie reviews, as you know, I do movie reviews. I mean, this is the sweet spot. Uh, Brandon has it calibrated for both all three positions. So, I mean, I could sit anywhere and it's going to sound good, but the middle section is always going to be the sweet spot. So it don't matter if it reclines. I, I wish it did, but I couldn't fit a three seat theater or uh, chair in here it wouldn't it wouldn't fit because of and i know i just panned that fast sorry sorry you man uh <laughs> uh the steps there has got me a little bit constrained uh you know as far as being able to do three separate reclined seats so that's why i had to go with the console now, i could either go with the console or two seats so i had to make a decision on that but uh as you can see those those speakers they're firing directly to the listening position and that that's why i, I don't have any issues with using them uh yeah so if you take the i got to get the turn back around right hey, hey chris let me take, throw out that if you ever decide you want to change out the the media center console because you and i have similar problems i i right. had that same media center i i ended up doing uh a love seat style it was still three separate seats i actually have four because my room's a couple of feet wider but i ended right. up doing they they can do like a, a love seat style where two seats don't have an armrest in the middle and then all what? three seats will still be able to recline you just won't have an armrest in the middle and you can still actually oh, really? yeah you can still actually buy like one that'll drop in there and you could just push it in um okay. to have an armrest but it's something to look at in the future just to throw it yeah. out there. Oh, I had that oh console. that would be good. That would definitely be good. Uh, I mean, I don't have many people out here unless they just come, you know, to, you know, check out the theater. It's mostly just me sitting, you know, at the end seat over here. But when I'm reviewing, I sit in the middle. Um, right. It's going to be yeah, nice to have a recliner. So, so maybe, yes. maybe Don, Don or I can hook us up. Uh, contact information i can i can send you what i'm talking about but yeah you can easily get some you can get three seats about the same dimensions and it'll just be be a, a love seat configuration but it's still again basically what they do is like one seat will have a left arm rest no right arm rest the other seat will have a right arm rest no left arm we can talk about it offline brother and the, yeah, those are seat crafts, right that'd be, good. that'd be great uh, but Chris, this was the craft seats, right? Say that again. Seacraft, yeah. yes, yeah, Seacraft, and it's and it's good. I've had it for over a year, and it still looks. I mean, it gets a lot of use, and and it's holding up well. And it uh, now I know Valencia is more you know popular. So you, you know this has the this has the LED lights. It's got the table that comes with it. It's got the uh, moving headrest, and it's got it's the, the table. I mean, it's got the table that come with it. I mean, it's it's got everything, you know. Yeah, I, I legit, 
I legit had the exact same seat craft. Now that I know it's seat craft, I legit had that same media sofa. It is an amazing for the again for the price. Amazing. Yeah, for the price. It, it is amazing. Very comfortable. It held up. I'm a big man. I sit in my room doing conference calls during the day. And, and you know, so I live in my room. And that right. seat craft, it, that seat craft, it, it held up to my big butt. <laughs> Sorry to be crass, but it, it held up to my big butt for a couple of years before I, I got rid of it and found that, that uh, uh, love seat configuration that we were talking about. But, yeah. I man, it, I beautiful setup bro yeah i definitely need to check it out now one thing i want to talk about is uh i know we were talking about the sub boxes earlier and y'all couldn't hear me uh this is actually the parts express box uh the what oh, is it called nice. Knock, knockdown build or something like that yeah and the reason why i mean guys i like being different that's why i went with Seacraft rather than valencia i could have bought valencia but i wanted i like doing different stuff I could have bought GSG boxes. Yep. They were about $350 per box per sealed. They were $230, $229. They were $509 shipped to my house for two boxes. Nice. Are there any, uh -huh. any additional or same internal bracing with those? It's got it's got the internal bracing. Uh, there's, a, there's a video. If you look at my channel, there's videos yep. in there. So it has the mm -hmm. same cross... I, I say the same. I, I'm, I'm not. I don't have a GSG box to compare it by. But just looking at pictures, right? I mean, it's all. I mean, it's all made the same. It's got the double face plate. Uh, right. I, I don't know if GSG recesses their subwoofers. This is actually, uh, if you can see, the sub is actually recessed in there. Yeah. Which so I'll, GSG does similar. It's a little deeper than yeah. that. But yeah. Yeah. So. Um, uh, it has it has a cutout for a plate amp, but I put just regular speaker term, terminals because I'm using the uh, the Suntron amp, yeah. and I've got them wired. Is I got dual four ohms, and I have them wired in series. I think that's right for eight, eight ohms. Right. Yep. Okay. And, and they are car audio subs. Someone asked in the chat. Yes, they're all car audio subs. They're actually the I, I want to say they're the entry level. There, there were there were only one hundred twenty seven dollars a piece. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's a deal. <laughs> They're cheap for an eighteen inch sub, and and you, as you can see, the surround. I mean, they have a pretty decent X Max. I mean, yes, for for uh, seventy dollars more, you can buy the stereo integrity subs. I'm I, I'm sure they're better, yeah. but they have similar performance if you start looking at them i mean it's similar uh, mm -hmm. i think just has a more x max maybe hold a little bit more power i don't know all i know is for four hundred dollars that's what i have in them subs with the little feet on them that looks like the svs sound pass feet but they're and, not and you're, and you're saying you have two of those right or yeah so two of those for so chris have you taken official measurements for those yet in your room i haven't i haven't yet i've run tests uh i've, I've done some movies i've done some music and at listening position and i'm out there but i've done uh some different things uh the the pv amp uh, i finally got it running on a separate 20 amp circuit uh, so that's pushing more power to the 418s behind the screen. And uh, then adding these two subs at listening position, I think with the, the music and in Ready Player One, I think I was hitting right, right around 121 decibels, which was is, is a lot for my theater. And that is a lot. And I knew at the cone, it was hitting right at 124 or 25 decibels. But that's that's music and stuff. I haven't. I, what I want to do, and I haven't done yet, is it, and I'm off next four days. I'm a uh, I'm a hook up to uh, my mini DSP, uh, run our uh, room EQ, and then I'm gonna take some measurements. I'm gonna try to do a video on it. Yeah, to see how they perform. But I'm telling you, just just by listen and feel, <laughs> guys, 
they, 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 they're performing well. They are really performing well. You That's don't great. need tactile tra transducers. I had a guy over here, uh, la let's see, last Saturday. And he's a state trooper. He's local. He wanted to come by and see my system. He hadn't been in a while. And he sat down in the middle position. I put him in a one. And as soon as it started, he looked at me. He said, you got you got butt kickers? I said, I do not. He said, it feels like it. I said, I know it does. <laughs> so it's amazing yep. that it's, it's, trans, it's transitioned to that. That's the 18s that are near field, brother. I get it all the time. I've had I, every time I have somebody in the room that knows about theater room, they're asking me if I have transducers, and after I tell them right. no, they're like, "Well, you don't need transducers. You don't need transducers in your room, Chris. You get you get a couple of teams that close to some seats. You don't need any transducers, brother." Uh -huh. Now I've got I've got the four Chase Audio 18s behind the screen. Uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm going to build another set of dual 18s i've got to make them a little bit narrower i'm gonna make them a little bit taller to get and a little bit wider i get or uh, deeper to get the airspace that i need uh they'll be sealed because all my subs are sealed i don't have any uh uh you know ported subs uh so i'm gonna have eight eight teams behind the screen uh when i add those uh two separate uh double eight teams I've got to get another mini DSP, and I think Brandon told me I needed a it's a, a mini DSP flex. I think uh, then I got to buy another amp. So I mean, it's going to take a little while, but I, eventually yeah. I'm gonna have 10, 18s in here, and that's probably unless I add anything right up to the back of the couch, that's probably going to be it. I don't think I'm gonna need anything else. To be with you. So, so that's I, what I, I was I, just gonna ask. If you're hitting 121 decibels at the main listening position right now. And right. you add those, you know, those 18s. If you add, if you're adding four more 18s, you're probably going to gain, what, 6 dB, something like that. So, I mean, are, are you trying to even it out? Are you not, not satisfied I, with what you got? I don't know. I just, okay, so I went to, and I'm going this weekend, I'm going to two of my friends' house. Uh, matter of fact, uh, if Michael is still in, in, in the chat, he met, when I met Michael, we met this other guy too, Frankie. He's part of my, he, he's, he's a subscriber to me. I think he's subscribed to probably everybody else too. He's just, he's just a great guy. Uh, both of them live in the same area in Columbia, South Carolina. So I'm going to make some visits to their theater. Both of them has been here. Uh, but the one guy, uh, I met him on Instagram, found out he was local. He came here. I went to his house. This guy, he builds his own boxes. He has a box that he built, a sixth order enclosure with two 518s, and he's hitting 149 decibels at the port on that box. Wow. Now, I think he said, I think he said at listening position, he's, uh, he's hitting 135 decibels. Now, that ain't got he has why chris you y'all y'all ain't heard all of it yet he's got a set of, he's got a captivator a four thousand captivator that uh jeff delivered to his house personally uh just i don't remember when he bought it but jeff delivered it to him personally uh he's also got he just upgraded he he's got a hover boss that is, if y'all know what a hover boss is, uh -huh. uh, he's got, he had uh, three 15 MTXs up on him. Now he's got the SCAR. I think he's got the EVLs, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, up under, on the hover boss, he had butt kickers. He's got, he had two JL Audio 12s. He had two SCAR Audio 12s. He, his room, listen, he could put a candle in his window and blow the candle out. He is pushing, he's got that much pressure in his room. And once you hear that, it's like going to Scott Newby's house. I've never been to his house. I hear all about it. I see the videos. It would be like going to his house and then going back to your house and be like, doggone man, what what, what else do I need to do? That, that, that's, that's, that's the deal. <laughs>
Those that Chris don't know, Scott Newby was on the show uh, a couple shows yeah. back. And yeah. He, uh, he actually showed his. He's trying to, well, he's already told, he's already let the cat out of the bag. He's coming back with another another yep. uh, JTR captivator. So he's going to have 18 18s in his room. 18 18s. And he's redoing his carpet. And I saw that. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, so. that guy is freaking awesome, man. He's got. So Look, I, mean, I want to be you, able. I want to be able to watch a movie that that I don't have to read subtitles. So right, <laughs> my, yeah, right. So, you won't be able yeah, to read that, subtitles. Your eyes are going to be too blurry. <laughs> that I want to keep going back to, like why? I, I just like do you? So when you were talking well, about adding more behind the screen, it was like okay, do you have Knowles in the room? And I think there's two juxtaposed <laughs> communities in the same home home theater community. One is almost like the car audio side that that a lot of us started on myself included of like how many decibels can we get to but then there's the other side of like i want to fill the nulls and i want to make sure the sound is full and i want to make sure everybody's having a similar experience so where are we at when it comes to i'm just going to add like 50 18 inch 21 inch 24 20 <laughs> stereo integrity right. <laughs> subwoofers yeah. and, and 100,000 watts is it really well, just two different communities and it's really just going back to our roots of uh, i just want it to be as loud as it can possibly be like screw my foundations i just want it to be just a, 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 a obtrusive or is it actually looking at what sounds the best in my space? Well, what I don't want to have any nulls, and I guess that's that's the thing. Right now, I don't feel like I have any. But the more subs you add, this is how this is how I look at it, and this is what me and David see. David, that's his name, uh, the guy that's got all the subs, and he has different size uh, uh, subs, so he's got them crossed over at different frequencies, so he don't he don't miss anything. I mean, he 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 catches it all. He catches the extreme low end uh the higher ends the the upper upper higher ends the mid bass i mean he catches it all now i'm not looking to do that because i mean i don't have the room for it uh, but the more subs you add i feel like you don't have to push them as hard because you got more subs working to you know fill the space and you know pressurize the room and stuff like that and and, and if you and if you need that extra on it's there. So I'll, I'll, I feel like, and I've, I've mentioned this on, on my channel, that Ready Player One is probably the most grueling demos out there. I mean, it it pushes my theater to the limit. It's, I feel like it does. And I love demoing that. And, and I've demoed, demoed it for people, and they, like, they don't really like it because they say it's not natural. Well, it's not. It's chaos. I mean, there's so much going on in every channel i mean low end in the height speakers surround speakers i mean it's chaos but it's it is a extremely good demo but um i just i just feel like i want to catch i want to have i, I don't want to be lacking when there's when there's something going on on the screen, I don't want to be like you don't want to get caught black here, Chris. <laughs> no, I don't want to be like <laughs> I ain't gonna be like <laughs> and and I and I feel that Chris is it, it, so the way I explain the Ready Player One demo, and I agree with you 100. percent We've all seen it a hundred times, right? I I explain that and and to 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 add to that, the JTR demo with the last M wave. Props to Youth Man right there. The last M Wave when JTR was there, I requested Ready Player One demo to hear it on their ridiculous amount of, of, yep. of captivators they had there. Just because we all know it so well, I wanted to hear it in that space. And it it killed that space. It flexed that space. My point in asking my question was more about measurements, right? It was more about you can throw subwoofers in a room and throw them everywhere cover yourself that's great so in my room for instance i had i had one psa power sound audio 18 inch subwoofer behind my my uh my row and it 
it shook the room. It was violent. And people were telling me back then I didn't need a transducer. But then I, I started doing measurements around the room and realized, well, not the round room, around the seats in the room and realized I had a null on the right, the far right side at, at about 180 hertz. So I started, I did the measurements and I realized I'm going to need a second sub. And that's when I added another 18 inch power sound audio sub towards the front right in a cubby that's unnatural in my room. And I'm going to say it again. If Ike ever finished my room tour, you would see the cubby that I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, don't count on that because my, it's going to be a long time. Yeah, I, I think, I, I think Ike that. works on the same schedule for his video editing that Don does for his <laughs> theater building. <laughs> I, I, thought to myself the other day, I thought to myself the other day because both Ike and I have that player one uh the, the revolution i thought to myself that he may get it out faster than me but, but then i i woke up and realized that <laughs> it's not gonna happen so but let, let, let me pull back and say i Can added that second sub out? and it and it cleared the it cleared the null in, in in that far right seat so my my question was more about are we throwing subs to get back to our roots or are we throwing subs because we want to clear nulls? And if we're clearing nulls, are we doing measurements to make sure we're clearing those nulls and making sure they're in the right place? Because it feels to me like, honestly, it's just, well, and, we're, and, we're and, throwing and, DBs. We're throwing and, DBs. But there's nothing wrong with that. I hear Not where you're coming from. Method. And I, I preach that all the time because I don't like people that have endless amount of monies trying to tell everyone else that, oh, you don't know audio because you don't have a $100,000 per speaker system. So you don't know what true stereo sounds like. It's like, whatever, you can <laughs> buy, you, you you can compare it to a $2,000 pair of headphones and and account coically know what it's supposed to sound. There's all, all, all these ways. But as far as the DB man, I used to do that whenever I was younger. I loved it, and it is. It's a great hobby. It is really, really fun. But it it, it is it's addicting. You know, it, it, I'm no longer quite that way. <laughs> you know, but uh, I like my bass. But I'm I'm not chasing the DBs because I know how difficult it is. Once you get once you start getting into that, you know, this is back in the '80s. You know, I. 140 in my car and i was like oh man this is amazing like and i think the record at that time was like 150 but then literally the year after that somebody with a huge sponsorship this is like a five six hundred thousand dollar vehicle hit like 180 decibels i was like oh i'm out i was like there's no way <laughs> i will ever have that much money <laughs> It's not even worth chasing at that point, but it's still fun. It, it's, you know, while you're doing it. it yeah, and just like Scott said, Scott Newby from uh, living with living it with cat uh, uh, pot, Scott and cat podcast. Um, he said that, you know, he's doing this for him. He's not doing it because he needs yeah. to do it. And in that case, he's yeah. And, and it. I, I and love that. I appreciate yeah, exactly. that. You know, it's just like someone getting a wrap on their car or, or spending $30,000 on a paint job. It doesn't make the car any better, but you know, it's like, yeah, but this is, it makes it mine. You know what I mean? So yep. that, and my that only, I'm my, all for. And, and and my only point in bringing up the comments that I did, I'm not hating. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. We were all there, but my only point was to to bring in potential theater room enthusiasts that are looking at. What oh yeah, you don't doing. have to have 140. You don't. Yeah, I've got I've got two yeah. I've got two 18s, and that's probably overkill for my space, right? So I mean, you you so that was my only point in the comment. You you want to get to a hundred and a hundred eighty decibels? Holy crap, that's insane! I couldn't even imagine one hundred and forty decibels. I couldn't imagine. I think I've gotten a hundred and twenty four in my space, so it's definitely overkill. So my only point in bringing all of that up was to say, if you're coming into this this hobby, don't think that you have to spend fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars to have a great sounding space. It, 
You mm. just need to learn how to do a couple of measurements and there's lots of communities out there that'll help you and we'll get you there. But holy cow, man, your space. Oh, is yeah. amazing. You, you, you can have a extremely watchable and enjoyable theater without even worrying about sound pressure at all because most people as a matter of fact if you're entertaining this with family and friends most people don't even care about the bass and all that they care about the picture and if they can hear the dialogue hence the reason tvs sell more than home theaters you know yep. <laughs> so and i'll, I'll go i'll nice. go back to def tech i'll go back to def tech that we were talking about your, earlier in the stream that's the reason i actually initially went with def tech because def tech throws subwoofers into their a lot of their speakers left right I, some of their high, i was speakers. into def tech when it was called definitive technology i was yeah. like well i got back into this hobby i was like what's def tech <laughs> and then i realized oh that's the fin like oh geez they're old i was like that i used to have i want to get back to oh. your theater because i i got a question about you know yes about the fabric right because like i told you i visited i actually visited someone that installs this you know uh, an actual retailer that does this and i i understand that there's obviously an art to it right and that it's not just something that I like that blueberry slam. Huh. Yeah, but um, so I understand that there's an art to it. So I guess my question to you is, can you walk us through like how you how you did the the doors to be able to hide the the fabric track all around? Because when I saw the doors today, I was like, man, that that looks really really good. Well, it installs on the doors just the way it installs on the walls. You know you. Now on the doors, I actually had to drill pilot holes. For some reason, I couldn't put the nails in. It was bending the nails. I'm only using panel nails, like you would put a panel in with in a house. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I drilled pilot holes and then put put them in. And you know, of course, you got the little tool to cut your angles on and then stretch the fabric on. I mean, it's I mean it, it it's it's on the doors. You know, basically just like you put it on the walls. Um, now I was going to do the little circle thing around the doors. I bought the, uh, flex, uh, fabric mate there. I don't know. I don't know what you use that for unless you're just going to do some nice little curves. Yeah. Uh, some design. Design. You ain't, you ain't doing those circles, not around the door and not around the projector part. I, I totally had to, I, I took that piece, piece of flex and put it in the garage out there. I said, I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I can't use it for that. So I got a plan uh, to fix that, and I'm going to do it tomorrow. I, I didn't do it tonight or this afternoon, uh, but I'm going to fix that tomorrow. But on the doors, basically, I, I you know, of course, I pulled the door handle out, and I just kind of cut the little holes for the door handle and stuck it back in there. So, you know, if you look at it close, you can see the fabric, you know, going in you know, mashing into the door instead of setting out. But honestly, it don't look that bad. But that's so how I had to do it. Can you see the actual corner of the track or does it uh, fold you, over? Well, you see the... Now, when you open the door, you can actually see the actual side of the track. But okay. when it's closed, you can't see it. Now, I did see some videos. It looks like they took some fabric and... and, and you know, tucked in there and wrapped it around. I'm not that picky. I'm not that picky. You know what I'm saying? But if somebody's installing it professionally, I could see them doing that. And that's what I was watching. I guess some professional guys putting it in. Uh, so they, but, tucked, they tucked it into the, the back of the door along the top of the frame. It looks like they wrapped it around and they tucked it in the front. Yeah, it's an extra it Yeah, 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 exactly. It looks like they tucked it around the actual fabric mate. But I mean, I'm not that picky. I'm not going to do that. I mean, because the door's closed, you ain't going to see it. And you ain't yeah, going to see one it. Of the, it's one of those things that you might notice it. No one ever, else is ever going to notice it. And right. we probably all have those instances all over our room. 
But yeah. I, I had thought about, so they're double tucking. So they're tucking the front of the door. They're tucking the back of the door, but then they're also tucking, wrapping around the door. So it's pretty right. wrapped. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. And see, I, I kind of, you can, you can actually do this a different way. Um, when I did my panels and this is me because I didn't watch the videos good enough. I actually did double, um, strips. So I actually, I got one panel tucked into a strip and then there's another strip for the next panel up beside it, which I think I could have used one strip and took yeah. both up in one strip. That is a mistake that I made. And that's why, uh, if you watch any of my videos, I, I'm, I'm showing cause my, uh, my buddy, John, he said some, some areas you can do that. Some you can't, I don't know which ones you can or can't, uh, but I can take a little small piece of fabric and tuck it in. So I, I'm making a, I'm hiding it with another piece of fabric. It still don't look as good if I would have used only one strip, but that's a learning curve and I definitely not going to change it. I mean, I, right. I'll, I'll clean it up and make it look good, but I mean, it's a learning yeah, curve. It already looks good, but you know, um, I was just curious on that, you know, for those of us that are thinking about DIYing it, you know, um, because well, don't, that's well, don't I'm, follow my videos. <laughs> don't follow my videos on it. Cause I mean, you can, but you know, learn what I what you know, mistakes I've made and definitely, you know, you can check some other guys there. There ain't a whole lot on, on YouTube about no, it. To be honest with you, there's not, it's not a whole not, lot on there. I've it's scoured. a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, fabric so, tucking is. If I ever did the fabric tucking in my room, which I'll never do because it's expensive as hell, I would never do it myself. And and the, <laughs> that's the reason it's expensive as hell. It's 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 yeah. it's a it's it's goes back to the same comment that I was making is either lots and lots of hours of your own labor or lots and lots of money of somebody else's labor. Yeah. And I'm that, not that's trying why to I do went that. To the, that's why I went to the velvet cotton. I thought about the fabric and I looked at it. I watched a couple of videos. It's like, you know what? Velvet cottons are actually very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, honestly, the, the velvet that I bought, I bought off Amazon yeah. and I think it was around $10 a yard. And yeah. the DMD was only like twelve ninety nine yard. It was only just a few dollars more. So, and yeah. and 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 as far as ease of putting it up, honestly, I think the DMD fabric is the best way to go. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a whole lot easier to put up than that velvet. So those that, tracks yeah. come in different different widths, right? You so can that, get different. Yes, you can get different. Uh, I think it's heights and it may be widths. I went with the quarter inch. Uh, okay. It's called quarter inch, but it says actual height is three eighths. Okay. And then I went with the black because you can get it in a natural, which is like a tan or whatever. And then a black black, I think is what everybody, mostly everybody would use. I would think. Right. Yeah. I, I probably, because I think I shared my design what I'm leaning towards for my design. So I probably would actually get the tan ones because I want to do t some tan walls. So. Well, they got all different, uh, kinds of fabric, different colors, shades and stuff. And, uh, it's, it's really good stuff and they have different textures, different colors and stuff. And, uh, of course I went black cause that's what I was going with the look. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, watching your progress on your theater, I'm really enjoying, really enjoying that. Are you, uh, are you getting out the M wave this, this, uh, I'm, this I'm year? not going to be, able, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it. I wish I could. I just, I just can't. I, I, <laughs> I've honestly spent so much money and I, Michael made a comment on it earlier about my car and I know y'all follow me on Facebook. I mean, I've spent so much money in that BMW and fixing it up and wrapping it and doing stuff and, and in my theater that, uh, I mean, I, I ain't no way I can make it out there. I wish I could. Uh, right. Hey, right, can you share the screen for me? <laughs> well, then give me control of the board again. I at least figured oh, out how no, to do that. we're not doing that anyway. tonight. <laughs> yeah. So, M-Wave, those of you that, uh, have not got your tickets for M-Wave yet, 
go ahead and use the promotion code HTH when you do purchase your tickets. Whatever proceeds come back to us for that, and that is like an affiliate link. Whatever proceeds come back to uh, come back to us for that, we're going to uh, you know, purchase some speakers or something like that to 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 give away on on this on this live stream here. So, listen. I mean, there's some heavy hitters in this that are going to have some experience rooms here. Send up, JTR, RBH, SVS, some great yep. brands there. Yep. Yeah. That- so, and then uh, I know uh, Michael actually announced this one today. I'm on his Facebook page. Oh, man, yeah. That, that Christy, I saw it and I smiled, man. I was like, wow. Yeah. I, I want to see I this. I They have all, like, you know, yeah. Emily has always had a high end. They had the Sony, the three, whatever, 350. <laughs> the, they the, had the, the Barco. They've had, and this will be the Christie. So, and that's a different genre. Like it really is. Like it's, it's mm-hmm. not going to have the black levels, but my God. God, they are bright, and they yeah. are Don't sharp. Go, go to the M Wave website and then click on the link for the brands. I think that will give you a list of everything. Mm-hmm. But I really want to see those swans too, right? Those the ascendos or ascendos, ascendos, or whatever. yeah, the ascendo, ascendo acoustics. Yeah, those are. Those yeah, are I, I, I really. Those too. I want to see the Ascendo. Are are they actually going to have a, an Ascendo room, or is they just going to be I featured? I think so. Based yeah, I, 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 post, I believe so. I, Michael, I believe do you want to they're going to have, have, have a room. room. It's going to be in with the yeah the Storm Christie and the Seymour AV room twenty two twelve. If nice. you want to get technical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, two rooms. Oh, they got two, two rooms. rooms. Oh, oh okay. yeah. You have to bring an extra big towel. Well, they better they better finish Ryan's room then. I mean, if they're going to bring it there, they better finish Ryan's room. Michael, yeah. can you report in the chat? How are we doing on 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 Ryan's room? <laughs> Do we have an update? Moving because I want to see that. Room. Yeah, click on he that assembly. Seems to, he seems to, uh, for, according to the last show that I listened to, it, it don't seem to be a problem. At least that's what Ryan was saying. So, yeah. That's gonna be sick. That I mean, his his VIP is sold out, but oh my gosh, that guy's gonna have some crazy. Oh, so breaking Click news on the for the details. Yeah. Breaking news: Ryan finished painting today. Wow. Yes, nice. I'm excited. I I want to. I'm like her, Ryan is gonna get harassed at that room. Dude. That dude. Oh, that is like, that is like a showpiece. That's a showpiece room. Peep, everyone's gonna want to hear it, be in it, listen it, experience can it. I, can I? Can I? Can I brag a little bit and just say that build montage may have some people going to see that room. I want to see it. if we can fill it. I'm so excited. I get to see the room. I'm so excited. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to Jonathan's. Um, and then I have a couple more. I didn't I wasn't able to uh, contribute to be able to see to be able to see Ryan's room. Oh, but, um, I'm just going to stand in front of his door and just keep knocking until he lets me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to film be, it. Who's, it's going to be amateur. Who's the doorman in there? He's, I'm I sure he's on the take, right? <laughs> I'm going to be that knock on your door until you open the door. Yeah. Fuck uh, well, I mean, in, the, in, this, yeah. in this community, that Don't is what it's Don't make me have to about. use the window. Just open yeah. the door, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so there's, uh, there's definitely some I'll, heavy I'll, hitters here. I'm sorry. I keep stepping on people. There's a delay here, but I'll film it. I'll send it to everybody. It's going to be amateur hour because Tony's not actually there for his professional filming, but I'm excited to see Ryan's room. That was selfishly why I was asking it was going to be done. So I'm stoked. Yeah. So uh, yeah, trust what, me, the what, world, what, everybody's going to be filming that room, man. It's going to be wild. Yeah. Michael, one thing that I'd like that I don't see, and uh, I don't think we had last year either is maybe if you can reach out to some um, acoustics companies that may be able to 
display some of their panels or or something like that um you know I, I it's a personal need for me but i'm sure you may be able to you know draw some interest to the to those rooms too so well, nobody responded i think michael has i think they talked about it on the last show he did um they have reached out i believe and they haven't gotten any response yet so okay perfect i'll i'll be i'll be honest and say like man in my experience, the panels and I and I I worked with a, a guy who had a PhD, and what he did was built built uh, uh, studios. He told me himself, like I just build the panels. They're they're so easy to build. If you can, if you can nail together a square like a rectangular, uh, it's just throw some mineral wool in there, throw some, some speaker grill uh, fabric over the top of it or whatever material you want. I mean, you geek in the, in the likes of that. And I am hoping not get in the way of a sponsor, but well, they're so expensive. Like you could just build a panel for 20 bucks, you know? I, well, you say that assuming you have all the tools, skills, tools to do it, tools. right? <laughs> That's the thing that people, because I, I, I'm not an expert, but <laughs> my dad was a contractor. So he, you know, general contractor. So he, I was forced to be very familiar with all woodworking tools and, you know, doing everything as well as building my own car engine for the, get my first car. But, but anyways, it's, it is cheap if you have everything um cheaper but the problem you run into is when you start doing your own stuff and you know you can make it however you want it there's a thing that we call in the industry scope creep you're like oh i could make it like this oh i need to get this pattern oh i want it to be this size oh i want to do this you know and and but let's just say you didn't do that it's still a lot of time if you mess up, that's going to cost you. Uh, and it's not some people, you know, don't have the uh, the patience or the like, it's like doing like a Rubik's Cube, you know, you have some things you just have to understand how they go together, how to get the same cut every time how to, you know, you do a, a block stop or cutting the same size wood, you do a you know, you, you, you got to know how to cut the fabric to get it to where when you fold it, it doesn't bunch up and it looks razor sharp whenever you're stapling it. You got to have really strong wrists to put in 1400 staples in sound. <laughs> you know, there's so no, many. I get things. it. No, you, I, get, you know, I, I get it. I, no, I get it. But then there's, it comes to placement, right? And, and yeah, there's lots and lots of information about first and second reflection points. And this is left mm -hmm. and right of your room it's also it's also the ceiling of your room for cloud panels yeah and that's going to be that's going to be the basics and then if you want to get deeper than that you're going to have to get an acoustician and we're talking about money anyway and we're not talking about building your own acoustic panels at that point any longer right because you don't care yeah. if you can afford an acoustician yeah. so it's really just building building three feet, four feet by two feet panels that cover your first and section ref second reflection points, your first and section second reflection points for the ceiling. And, and if you want to go above and beyond, according to the, to the uh, studio guy, it's, it's, you're going to have a couple of, of cloud panels just above your LCR, mm -hmm. which, which what I put in place, but, you can do the basics and it's inexpensive and the information as far as where to put the first and second reflection points is all over the internet with you use a mirror. We all know it. It's, it's not difficult and you can build and just like Michael was saying in the chat, it's it, you can save a ton of money by doing that. And I get it, but I get as far as the skill point is concerned, but you can make an inexact, an inexact uh, four by two panel that you just screwed screwed a rectangular d 
design of wood together and given yeah i mean you have to have basic woodworking parts i get that but if you it so let's say you're going to build eight acoustic panels right two two to the left two to the right two two uh, up top left two up top right and you were going to build it you're going to save the money over some basic woodworking tools to build your own acoustic panels over buying acoustic panels that cost two hundred dollars plus a piece right so, oh well, anyway yeah, you're talking 200 but, but where yeah, are you buying two hundred dollars a piece man i guess they're only like 50 bucks a piece no that we're talking about gig gig i mean isn't gig a couple hundred bucks for an acoustic no. panel? No. Yeah, no. no, they they got yeah. some really expensive ones though. They have some super expensive ones, but you can get them way cheaper than that. Yeah, I mean, Etsy but, is actually a good place. You can go to Etsy, and there's people that make acoustic panels for fairly cheap that that are actually yeah. decent too. Yeah. So I I would recommend that yeah. if you That's if you don't good, have the skills. Do it. Yeah, if you don't have the if you don't have the money to do it to your. Or, or money or tools or skills or whatever to do it yourself go to Essie. i mean they, they make some good stuff just make it make sure they're using mineral wool of some sort that's that's decent quality that that's good stuff too I, i'm with you acoustic panels yeah. are 40 bucks a pop starting for two inch panels from who like gik gik acoustics for yeah. like what 12 by 12 inches uh, I don't well, know. no, that's also no. That's but keep in mind when they're saying square is forty two bucks a piece. But that's also two inches thick, as opposed to the four yeah. inch thick yeah. that you can right. get. Yeah, it depends on what you frequencies can... you're trying to handle and where yeah. you're putting yeah. it. You can right. get your five and a quarter inch for seventy bucks a piece. I'm telling you, the ones that I that I've built for my room, and and I did buy some. I've I have gig panels in my room. Don't get me wrong, but if you want a legit four by two panel with four four inch thick uh a mineral wool you're talking about a couple hundred bucks yeah it really it's about, from... it's about a hundred dollars i think i mean if you already have the tool right and it's well if you're if you're easier. doing if you're doing the their with their diffusion and stuff like that then yeah i i could see that but i just i don't see anything for a couple hundred bucks on here for that I the, know. I, I, I think you're. I, I think you're catching. Uh, honestly, I think you're catching me lying. I think I. I yeah. guess right. I think they're they're like a hundred bucks a piece. Yeah. But even still, yeah. if you can make it, yeah. Like 20 yeah. Bucks, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But it's it's one of those things where. Yeah, you're. <laughs> You know, just don't, just how don't much pay, time just don't pay hundreds or two hundred, five hundred dollars for those things, right? If you can make them, if you already have the tools, and yeah, uh, like or Michael buying them saying, from someone who can yeah, make if them. You already them. have the tools, yeah. I think Michael, yeah, you could probably check make a Facebook stuff. Marketplace, man. You find people, but, yeah, you'll find somebody who can do them. Just you know, yeah. huh. if you're gonna buy, if you're gonna do those basic thickness panels, fabric wrap that's just basically a shadow box with fabric and stuffing in it, get those DIY. But if you want something that's decorated is diffusion based it's been measured for certain frequencies and you're using it for like a higher level purpose then maybe you approach companies to have one of those specific panels done but the basic stuff yeah get somebody to build it or try to do it yourself yeah and then you like someone say in the chat then you got to ship it and the shipping costs like two panels <laughs> it's like, yeah oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah okay well yeah. and then pray that it arrives on in yeah. shape yeah. Well, the last time I did the math, by the time you buy the tools and all the equipment, um, and I was doing two by four, four inch panels. And of course, the prices may have increased from the time that I did. It took two, 10 panels to break even. I could have bought GIK, but I was able to customize all mine to fit like my windows mm -hmm. and all this extra stuff you know and mine are you know really sturdy i have center frames i have all kinds of extra stuff on mine as well but i didn't account for that you know i didn't add that to my price but for the time that you spend doing all that stuff you know that's you know i counted you know minimum wage salary for the amount of time you're going to spend doing it um 
it, it Dude, just sit in your garage one Saturday morning and do one, and then the next yeah, Friday. Yeah, no, no, hour. absolutely. If if if, if money, it, if hour. if time is not a thing, and because you can get really inexpensive woodworking tools to do it. Yeah, if you if you wanted to do it as cheap as possible to get it done. Yeah, yeah, DIY is always the answer for everything, but people forget, e even people that are on the cheap, you know, it's like, you're gonna it's spend- Time or money. It's yeah, time, or money. time or money, and you're gonna spend money on, you know, $100 minimum on tools, minimum. Yeah, but, but then you own the tools, and, right? That and you're the tools only will come in handy. The tools maybe, can fix anything maybe, else. I'm, I'm sorry I did this. Maybe. I think I did this. I'm, I think yeah. I did this. I apologize. I want to so badly show you all the the movie poster acoustic panels that I made. Like, I mean, it goes back to time or money. It's all time or money. I mean, well, I yeah, no, I'm a DIYer. I'm money. I'm all DIY all the time. Just because, even if it costs me more money, I'm learning something. So that's exactly. why I do it, you know. You know DIY my... your panels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just funny. here's the, here's the thing is like with with my experience in, in helping people with their home theater builds, and and I've easily done hundreds of them at this point through build montage. Acoustic panels is is and and I think you could tell with with my friction on this conversation, that's my biggest challenge is these acoustic panels. Like, we all know where the basic acoustic panels go. Acoustic panels are so easy to make. And these companies that are charging $100 plus for an acoustic panel, let alone the movie theater acoustic panels that Ike, come on, man, show me, show, show them my acoustic panel. <laughs> the, 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 the movie theater, I'm just going to keep going, dude. I'm going to keep doing it. The, you must have I mean, you must have you must have got upcharged or something because I'm like man, I, yeah, no, I don't know where you were buying yours, but they must have right, got you coming. Like, oh, this guy I, got the money. No, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna show you a couple of them because I'm just gonna do it. Um, so Avengers, see the Avengers acoustic panel. That acoustic panel from a company I was looking at was over five hundred dollars. The uh, the other Avengers one that was a thousand dollars. Well, I that made, there I that made these is, for I made these for thirty dollars. Is different. The reason where did you get these, them printed, and what did you get them printed on? Yeah, yeah. I got them on a, I got them on acoustically transparent cotton. Yeah, yeah. there's and, a difference and, between licensed products and homemade products and that no, that, these are all will... these are all these are all fan made all the art on these yeah that's now, that's why they that, don't cost like 500 bucks yeah that 900 that's, that's was point. licensing mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. but that's my point is yeah now like, that that yeah cool i'm like talking that plain you... panels i'm not talking art panels yeah in that well, case yeah, that's, even, even, the, that's even the movies fight. even the movies the posters are from don't even cost that much for the 4k blu-ray disc mm -hmm. but i mean yeah. i have even just grill and i was about to show you the cloud panels because they're just speaker grill material mm -hmm. but those were still extremely cheap to make too my my only point and, and this is why i've got friction with with the acoustic panels is that one is so crazy inflated like that, like acoustic panels are so crazy inflated. If yeah. there's there's a one percent population of us that are gonna get gonna get get an acoustician to come into our room, measure it, tell us exactly what needs to happen. Gick and other companies have free uh, consultations that'll tell you this is my opinion with basic measurements and not really knowing your room, being in the room physically measuring the room and telling you exactly what needs to happen. If you're not paying for an acoustician, you're not getting that. And so what you're doing is if you're buying these acoustic panels, you're buying a huge markup. You're buying a huge markup. And and you could easily just go out there. I'm going to drop two guys tech has has a video 
where he lines up every single step of what you need to do down to the software, the settings in that software that you need to do to build exactly the same thing that I've got in my room. All you have to do is find a company that will print it out for you. And they're not copyrighted, and and you're going to save thousands of dollars over oh, what yeah. I did in my room. Thousands, and that's why I've got such a huge issue. And this is this is why you're hearing me being spirited right now because <laughs> it is it is. If you're talking licensed versus unlicensed. Yeah, it's product. licensed artwork. Yeah, that, that I, yeah, absolutely. I have. I would put yeah. like a AI kittens on my I'm panels. Talking like it wouldn't cost me a dime. Black versus black fabric, not any. I'm talking just acoustic panels for a, a better audio experience. Not. But Paul, I hit that too. I hit that too. Like my my cloud panels are black with speaker grill material yeah. on it. Etsy wanted a hundred dollars per speaker grill with two. It was four feet by two feet, with with a uh, two inch thick or two and a half inch thick uh, uh, insulation, mineral wool insulation in there, and and they wanted that much money, and I was able to do it for like a fifth of the price. But again, I mean, we're taking into the account that yes, you have to buy some basic tools, but even once, if you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got more than that, but the very basic that you're going to need for a decent theater room acoustics is going to be eight. Four on the ceiling, two on each each wall, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. So that's eight hundred dollars from Gick or another like kind of company. Yeah. And I'm and I'm sorry if we're taking us off the rails, guys. Oh, no, no problem. Hey, man, this is what it's all about. <laughs> we're having fun. So, but it, so we're talking about eight hundred dollars. So, do you know how much you bought in wood? How much I you do? Bought I spent I spent twenty to thirty dollars per per panel, and that's even with the uh, and this is pre the 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 uh, graphics the the posters. Yeah, this was pre COVID. So this is when there was a company that's in business has since gone out of business. I spent thirty dollars per movie poster on those panels. The the straight blanks that are in the ceiling that are just so black you got your rock was wool. twenty dollars. You got your rock wool and all your wood and all your nails for twenty bucks. Twenty dollars for the ceiling, thirty dollars for the uh, uh, movie posters. Because it was extra money to have them printed out for the movie posters. Yeah. Where are you yeah, getting your I, I did print from my fabric design too. It's unfortunate it closed yes. down. But yes. but at the end of the day, right, I think it's one of those things where if you are DIY and you DIY the home theater, you will probably have some I have rock walls sitting in my garage. Right? Yes. <laughs> I have two by fours all over the damn place, nails and everything. So mm -hmm. at that point, it would take you, it takes me about an hour to put so, that stuff together and while chasing my two year old that. daughter around. So it's like, yeah, I mean, here's the it's way that money I versus time. Money, money versus right? time. If you're going to, if, if you have the tools, if you've already spent the money on the tools that it's going to take to build this stuff, then you're going to save the money. But if you got to go buy a chop saw, if you got to go buy, you know, clamps, you got to go buy a, a brag nailer, whatever, whatever, you know, to, to, to hold them in place, all that stuff, then Crank. that's when it's going to start costing was, you the money. It was still you, don't, cheap. you don't even need all that to build acoustic panels. I mean, you need to nail a hammer, the saw. Yeah, you, the you, you, you can. Or you can go to Home Depot, yeah. give them the measurement, they will cut it right there for you. You go the home tool, with your nail and your hammer, and you hammer that thing I, together and stay. I, I had no. Yeah, I should have been I had like no you. tools. <laughs> no, I yeah. had no tools. I got, I got a leveler. I got an edge. I got a saw. I got, dude. It cost me two hundred dollars in tools. I still save tons of money. That's why I'm. This well, one yeah, side, yeah. Once I'm, you get to a certain amount of panels, right. for sure, you're. Even if you're making mistakes, you're going to save money. Just yeah. have that's people, why, that's, that's have why I do it, always right? just cut the size for you. Go out there, yeah. tell them you want this yeah. length, this weight. They will cut it for you. It's, it, it, 
I mean, well, yeah, I guess I, I couple, this they, they will mm-hmm. make a couple cuts. They will not cut. I think it's. I think it's a low. I think. I think this is a low. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, I'm a little I'm, bit more intricate when I build stuff. I'm I'm doing like, yeah. you know, pocket pocket uh, screws and and everything else like that. I, 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 did, I, I did that, Craig. I got the Craig set. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. I'm never going to get invited back to this I, channel. I, I, I guess. No, no, no. I, I, I love, love you guys. Thanks for having me. Here, here's, <laughs> here's what I will say. Okay. You can absolutely do it cheaper, but that's assuming you know how to work with power tools what will be the cost if you accidentally cut off a finger yep is that worth a hundred dollars a panel to you buddy <laughs> what, what so, finger are we so I, i'm just saying there's right. different so, people so in the I world <laughs> yes i myself am a diyer but right. so, and i diy'd all my panels but i will not say oh my god it's a hundred dollars versus you know thirty dollars or twenty dollars or whatever you did. Yeah, that's a big markup. That is a huge markup. I but think, okay, so I think in conclusion, the bottom line is don't get ripped off. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. Why, wait, wait, this, wait, is, this is like the whole Clyde Escape versus ripping your disc type conversation. It is <laughs> absolutely is. Just because and, and I don't want conclusion. It, wait, hold it. on. <laughs> <laughs> if you can afford it, pay for it. But don't, don't I pay love for, it. I love it. Don't pay for I'm not arguing. Hey, Eric, I'm not with you. Look, I'm still doing my own drywall. So I'm arguing for. I'm arguing that it's okay to buy GIK, and I don't own a single he GIK. Buy, he built all of his stuff. So like, I don't know. I just, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it more time and just say, you go to Gick. You're not gonna have that. Beautiful That's shit. true. That that is absolutely true. That hands down. You you, you you're hundred percent right on that. <laughs> yeah, but you can but, buy a poster but, and just put it over top. But if so, you pay me five hundred dollars, I will build it and I will ship it to you for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think uh, no this is all asked. inspiring me to start building panels to my local yeah, area. I Shit, I bought all those tools for myself, so I'm just going to start building for my buddy. Five hundred dollars shipping included. Yeah, I'll if get all my money within, back by next week. If you leave week. within eight hours' drive, I would personally deliver it to you. All, all <laughs> I need, all I need is, cost is that uh, much driving eight hours. I would drive eight hours and drop it off at your house. I just so need you to so video of my panels, so that way I can sell a million of them, and I can stop being an IT consulting manager, and we're done. Hey, for five hundred bucks a piece, you just recently wrapped your panels, right? What you you wrapped them in the fabric, right? Yeah, I I did all the wrapping, stapling, but so I will say, Paul has a point because I I did end up spending five hundred dollars on tools. But it was only because oh, I knew. Two to five. Uh, huh? I know, I dude. I told you. No, you so could do. Free. No, you could so do it. You could legit. Happens, you could legit. Man. That's... You could legit do it for a couple hundred bucks in tools. You could. Yeah, legit you do could. A couple hundred uh, absolutely. But I am lazy, so I bought an electronic stapler, electric stapler, and all the kind of BS that goes with it. And I spent about 500 bucks in tools, and I probably could have gone to Gick. But again, I would not have had these beautiful. Yeah, that, that, yeah. once you're showing the specific the art and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hands down. If you're going to wrap your own, then you definitely are going to want to at least buy the Gick and then re wrap over it. <laughs> Because <laughs> you can actually buy, I don't know if people even know this, you can buy GIC panels that you have to staple the fabric. Right. Yeah. It, they sell all the DIY. And that, they sell yeah. So, DIY. But yeah, no, I, like I said, I, I'm just being other, other side of the coin. I'm all DIY all the time because I like right. learning stuff. You know, that's... Yeah. That's what I do. So and I've just you recently know, wrapped your panels, right? <laughs> I, Chris. Yeah. Chris just recently wrapped your panels. What what did you use to uh to wrap them? Was it a stapler or, or how no, did you... no, no, now now in my first theater, 
I've been sitting here listening to everybody, but in my first theater, I actually That's built my I panel. To get you involved. <laughs> in, in my first theater, I built my panels. I used the uh, uh, one by fours, and I had the rock wall, and you know, insulation. Then I wrapped them in fabric. I had two by four. I think I had five of them, and then I built some two by twos and done them on a diamond in the back. If you look at my older videos, you'll see them in there. Now, fast forward to this theater. I actually used the two by fours in behind my screen. If when I lifted my screen behind the speakers on the wall, I actually have my you know acoustic panels behind the speakers. I have um, the uh, foam you know, to fill up the rest of it, you know, for just acoustics. So it don't, you know, vibrate and stuff. But in the theater, I bought the toning panels. Uh, I think they're 12 inch by 36 inch. Uh, I think they were around 160, $170 a piece. Now I'm a real big Van Halen fan. And the patterns look like Eddie Van Halen's guitar with the crazy patterns, but they were black and white. And I loved it. A lot of people commented on them. They liked them. Matter of fact, uh, uh, Haterade Cowboy just posted a video, and I think he bought some of the same panels, and he said he saw them on my channel. He bought some, uh, and he said he was going to cover them because of reflections, and I said, that's exactly why I covered mine. I did not have to do anything. The, uh, the frames of those are aluminum. And they have the fabric. I don't know how they did the fabric on there. So what I did is just laid the panels down, cut my fabric, folded it over, and actually tucked it in. It's not glued. It's not stapled. I can actually pull the fabric off if I want to. Cool. It's just it's just folded in such a way. I mean, to me, it don't look bad. Um, and I mean, I could probably take a video out there and y'all look at it, and it might look. We couldn't even tell. Know, Look, I know. Look I mean, but, but it's only it's it's just folded in, and I could walk out there and grab one corner and and pull it off, and I still kept the integrity of the panel because I mean I paid around one hundred seventy, hundred eighty dollars per pair, per pair for them. But they're nice panels, and I and I don't feel bad about what I spent. And I know y'all, you you, I know you guys saw all the panels I got. I think I got eight or so on the floor i don't have any on the ceiling yet and i'm that, that that's my next thing in my last video i mentioned that i'm a, i'm gonna be doing some treatment on the ceiling i hadn't done anything on the ceiling yet but that's coming but yeah, yeah I, 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 I actually want to do um, ceiling treatments also too so i'm actually thinking about doing the fabric mate that's what i mentioned in my video i'm thinking about putting tracks up there just putting the fabric mm -hmm. up there and i may even put the uh the backing in there like we was you know mentioned earlier i may right. end up putting some backing in there for that but i'm not i'm not sure yet that, yeah, that's the, the same that's the and put the board up there you know the, yeah. the duct, because that way it's a little bit more rigid you can actually screw it to the to the ceiling or or you know something like that just use a regular drywall drywall yeah. screw put it in there and then you can cover it with yeah. with you you know just and you can actually just stage that wherever you want to and yeah. if it doesn't sound right, okay, you take it back down, right? right. So you, yeah. know, you you can add some diffusion or or whatever else, you know, mm -hmm. and then cover it. I did speak to Anthony uh, Germani uh, a while ago about putting diffusion up there and then cover it with fabric. And he said it when you do that, it then turns into absorption. Uh -huh. So uh, just just in case you decide that you wanna you wanna put you know, diffusion up there. Don't right. cover it yep. is what I, what I was told. Yeah, I had a really long conversation with a number of different industry people at the show recently about using diffusion instead of absorption in certain capacities, because I've been reading in the chat, youth man has been saying like, when it comes to you, like your first, second reflection points and using absorption, I mean, it's pretty obvious where they would go. And yes, it makes a difference in the room where it gets complicated is, are we measuring for which frequencies the panels are handling and is it e is it even or is it making additional problems because if you're not doing 
the density of material, their locations for which frequencies it's hitting. Is it causing other like mid-range frequency dropouts and absorption actually pulls energy out of your room? So diffusion doesn't pull energy out. It just scatters it. So this conversation I have with these professionals were saying that if you want the most out of your system, it's like adding really loud speakers with high sensitivity and dynamics and then adding absorption on the wall. Next thing you know, the energy of your speakers is sucked out. So it's like, well, why did you buy high energy speakers if you're just taking it out of the room anyways? It's Correct. kind of like it, it really is a wasted a bit of energy. So well, do, doing diffusion and having the right data ahead of time is going to save you all of that struggle and it will be better balanced at the end. It's now, the data, though. That's what we're not discussing and, and what I mentioned. So first and second reflection points are pretty widely accepted in our industry or in our hobby, rather. You get past that. Now you're looking if you want to do it right and you're going to put that money into it, you really, and I'm going to say it again, you're going to need an acoustician because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just guessing. We're yeah. all guessing in the first place. We're making educated decisions or educated guesses based off well, of but that's first the and thing. section. That, that, that's where it gets tricky. Okay, and this is where I loosely stand. So you're right unless someone actually comes out and measures and designs a room very specific. But what a lot of the industry is not telling you, a lot of this science, just like a lot of things in this industry that have spoken, are not applicable in your standard 20 by 20 room. Most of that stuff where you're talking about diffusion versus absorption and stuff like that are in great halls because you don't want to kill the sound. You want the 50th row to have just as good as experience as the fifth row. That's where that really matters. In reality, in a home theater, if you cover 30% of your room with absorption, you're 99% there as good as you're going to get in a room 20 by 20. But and that's, that's if you're what talking a great a hall, if you're talking a, an amphitheater, that's where all that science holds true. But guess what? You can't say that to someone that's willing to spend $1,000. Now, acoustic panels look way better than absorption, always. Well, unless you like printed fabric and that's what you want to do. But acoustic, you know, dispersion always gives you three-dimensional objects, which always looks better in the mind in, in in an artistic way so to me it it always looks cool to do that it, way better it, it's way more amazing now how much more effective it is ain't nobody gonna show you measurements in a standard home not these 25 or not even 25 but these 50 foot rooms at long in a standard 10 by 10 room Nobody's going to show you these measurements. Ain't nobody. I can name two right now that I talked to over the weekend, but okay. Well, now, well, they'll I, do the measurements oh, if you're willing to pay for it. I well, think no, no, no. I'm just saying if they've done that, then then we should see those. Uh, it wouldn't be an argument. Let's see their data. Yeah. You, they should have links. <laughs> But the problem is it's going to be different for every 10 by 10, 20 by 10, whatever. Oh, yeah. every room is going to be every 100%. room needs its own set of data points. Absolutely. Yep. Then and that's, even, that's the it, thing is like, who's, who's spending five figures to have an acoustic. Well, that's, that's, that's room. my point. They won't do that. Cause no one's no one in a 10 by 10 oh. room spending five figures on a 10 by well, generally not. So <laughs> I, uh, I actually reached out to Matthew Pose when I first started on my theater. <clears throat> and he's he's well known, right? So he's well known in the in the YouTube space and and everything else. Uh, he he actually helps Anthony Gamani. And honestly, I don't know what he's charging now, but it was fairly inexpensive for him to go ahead and design something for my room for me. Cool. Um, I say inexpensive, but uh, you guys are talking five figures. I mean, I honestly when I, this was a couple of years ago, I think I paid him like five, 600 bucks to draw it up for me. Mm. And then 
to come to my house. Now he lives in Florida, so it's not that far, but he quoted me something like, 1100 1200 bucks to come to my house and and just you know measure everything out so yes that's a lot of money right you know um i'm not saying it's not but relatively you, inexpensive compared to what yeah that's correct. that's crazy <laughs> that, i would that's do that. dimes would. on the dollars compared to so no, i don't so know what his might price be underselling him <laughs> you know maybe he did you a favor <laughs> no no i mean he he said that you know that's you know, on other channels before you know about the going rate for stuff now obviously he don't have to stay overnight at my place he don't have to fly he don't have to you know do all kind of stuff like that so uh, because i live in florida i'm only like two three hours away from him so you know it's it's so his price that's why that's why i preface it first i don't know what his pricing is now but that's basically i didn't know him from adam so i didn't get a I didn't get a Horizon Home Theater discount or anything like that. Yeah, but, me, but, but that's know. just that's just for the measurement, right? Because even after the measurement is done, you know, a professional like him is still going to recommend that you buy specific or certain Correct. types of materials and acoustic, whatever, right? <laughs> and those are not going to be your forty dollar. No, you know. So at the end of the day, it's still you know, it's still an expensive process. <laughs> Yeah, the and design fee first... might be minimal, but I guarantee you he's not going to come recommend some thirty dollar panels from GIK for you, a room of your style <laughs> no, after taking no. those measurements. Well, and and here's the thing: like this is when I first got started on this, and and yes, I had some research, but n not in the panels and everything else. But he was sending me links of of panels that were like for for base space traps that were like aluminum like the whole front of the panel was aluminum and i'm like how is that gonna work right and I, i'm thinking you know and then once you learn more and more that hey that base wave is gonna pass right through that aluminum you know <laughs> so uh, but yeah. yeah it's uh so you, you learn more and more so yeah i mean it's uh it's definitely interesting you know but we're, and that's uh, that was that's my whole point, Don, is that it's acoustics is it's a rabbit hole, man. It and, it is it is. There's there is so much, it, and there's more psychoacoustics than actual, you know. Yes. <laughs> just I mean, if, if you get, in my opinion, you get to the point where you have a you're doing a clap test, and you're not hearing echoes, but it's not a hundred percent dead in again this is this is one man's opinion you're in a good place and in, in, in a smaller room acoustic panels tend to do that you know i there is a place for dispersion and and i agree with paul in saying i think i think that that difference is a larger space because i've been in a lot of rooms and absorb pure absorption seems to do a really good job in making that sound really, really crisp. But I've done the opposite of what the base of my job is as a PM, and I've redirected this this conversation for over an hour now into acoustic panels. So, Dodd, what do we got coming, brother? Are we good? Yeah, no, I mean, look, this is what this is all about, right? I, I want people to, you know, jump in here, jump out of here, you know, come in, show their theater updates, you know, do it you know, talk about whatever you guys want. There's no true format here other than we just like to have a guest that would you do a, a home theater tour, right? If, if we can every single week that, uh, and thank you very much, Chris, for, for joining us again. We, we definitely appreciate you, you know, you sharing your, your theater again with us. Um, cause I've been watching you and I, and like I said, I, once I seen all the updates, I was like, Hey, let's, let's get Chris back on here because he's got some very interesting stuff, especially to the, the DIYers out there that are, that are building subs and, and, and doing their own fabric and, and doing their, doing everything else. And I like the fact that you're reviewing, you're actually reviewing movies, which, you know, that's the whole point of our home theater, right? <laughs> and that, and that what we're supposed to be watching content in our theaters. So yep. If you guys haven't gone to my home theater on YouTube, make sure you go over there and subscribe. Um, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please make sure you send us an email to uh, what is it? Home theater hub live at gmail.com. Right. Ike, I, I, I yes, might get sir. that right. You got, you got it right. You got it right. 
<laughs> so uh, also uh, Kanga stepped away, but Siphonics Audio, make sure you check his channel out on Instagram and everything. He's doing some really, really good things with with photographs and articles and, and everything else like that. Yeah, I'm but, excited. Um, I'm excited for uh, uh, Kanga um, and his uh, future endeavors. I think it's going to be fun. I hope he's, you know, as long as he's having a good time, I'm sure he's, you know, going to love it. Um, and what I missed his, uh, some of his opportunities that he was running into earlier. What were yes, those? Kanga that you had uh, that some of the opportunities that you said you were running into earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I had a that was a really weird moment. Ike's the only one that knows what happened. Anyways, thank you guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a long sort of focused road from a number of things that happened. I'm not going to you know, rehash stories, but I'm I'm just grateful beyond words that doors have opened and allowed me to bring interesting things to more people because that's really like I I feel like maybe I'm doing it for myself but I'm only rewarded when other people are excited about what I can do. It's not just for me in this sense, it's really about how much more excited it makes other people or how, how the education helps someone or the inspiration helps someone else. It's yeah, it really isn't right. just about what I'm doing. So you're enjoying what you're doing and people are enjoying your productivity or your piece of it. And that's, that's a great place to be, you know, no matter what. Yeah. You do. Oh, well, for the most part, because of course there's going to be people who are either, um, miss you know miss uh misconstruing things or they're not really sure yeah. what's going on and they may have a perspective that's not either accurate or just you know they don't they're they're not sure what they're looking at so their feedback is not on uh not on par let's say <laughs> but i mean for the the for the majority i'm i'm encouraged more by people in the industry i mean i'm talking about designers owners brand owners the reps the people that are like behind the industry not so much end user or uh consumer level or that kind of thing i'm i'm embraced by the people who are designing and building it rather than those that are buying and using it so that's a whole other world and i'm yeah, extremely whole grateful for that. different world yep. yeah yeah <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. very good. I'm happy yeah. for and you, man. That's you, good. You said it's like 90% that you're going to be living amongst amongst the humans instead of the vampires again. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he'll still have uh, this vampire my, room. <laughs> yeah, my 90, 95% sure that I'll be joining day shift. So if my skin looks a little ashy and, you know, you know I've been in the sun too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. Funny. Uh, definitely appreciate everyone joining this evening. We're at, uh, with technical difficulties, we're at three hours for this evening. So thank you all the audience that held on and uh, was patient with me operating a board with an inferior product to Ike's computer over there. So, um, but yeah, thank you everyone. Definitely appreciate it. We will see you next week. Next week, I think we got, who we got next week? I gotta check. I don't even remember. I think I think it's Mr. Giles next week. Yeah, I think we got Giles yeah. coming on next got week. Got Mr. Giles giving his theater tour. So um tune in, make sure you guys tune in next week. Anyone on the panel wants to join, Ike has room for up to ten. So uh please feel free to join. Who knows? Maybe I'll even practice some and and over the weekend yeah, and trust me, this we'll be out. holding some training sessions. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you practice. I, I'm I'm down for it. Anything that helps. Oh, <laughs> and if you'd like to be if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please send us an email to hth. What is the it home, like? Hth home theater, home theater home hub live. home theater hub live at Google. <laughs> Email, I, I don't know my own channel. I don't know how to run a board. Know. You know, whatever. Hey, man, I've been up since 4 30 this morning, so I'm tired. I apologize. Oh, man. I yeah. love it. But I thank you guys it. for watching. We'll see you guys next week, same time on the Home Theater Hub.
Bye. Cheers. Bye. Mm-hmm.